former champion, Xfinity Series champion right there, and Daniel Hemrick. And I like discipline because that means, you know, you, you carry so much speed through three and four, you want to overdrive one and two. I think discipline is the key because that's not what we saw at Bristol. And for that reason, you see the points. Barry was involved in an accident. Parker Kligerman had a, a mechanical issue. Mayer involved in an accident. That's why those three at the bottom of that playoff leaderboard. This is the second race of the round of 12. Again, Allgaier won a week ago at Bristol. They have this race, and then they'll have a week off before the Roval will determine the cutoff for them. Win and you advance if you're a playoff driver. And right now, Allgaier, after winning a week ago, won the pole earlier today. He brings the field to the green flag. Very interested to see how the first time through the top. Oh, you see it. The Mayor's into the wall. Yes. No grip in the outside lane. We saw this at qualifying. A couple cars we got, we got right have down. spun Stay out. There. No grip for the one car. Straight into the fence off turn two. Slow. They stay green. As we see cars going around him, he's trying to get to the bottom so he can get to pit road. But he hit the wall hard. On to pit road he comes, and we stay green. There was just no grip in the outside lane. He ended up maybe a groove higher than he expected. And the car went straight. The 98 also right side damage. Heavy damage on the right side of the 98. Here, the, the yellow's out here. And the caution now has come out. Rick, the second lane and third lane and one and two. So slippery in cup qualifying. We saw cars spin out on their own. Even leaving pit road, just getting up to speed. Sam Mayer got out there and just had no choice. The car went completely straight. So take a look at this, Sam Mayer on the outside. And he's just up in that light gray area. There has been a lot of run up there through both practices and qualifying. Yeah, you look, he's definitely a half a car higher than all the rest. And for that reason, he just chases the car and runs out of real estate. That wall really narrows up quickly. Heavy, heavy damage. And then you see that Herbst car just in front of him. He had contact a lap later. Caution out early in Texas, and it's playoff drivers involved.
Fans, download the official app of NASCAR. You can follow the action with free live scoring. There's in-car cameras as well as a radio broadcast. You can also upgrade to premium for access to driver audio channels and an ad-free experience. Search NASCAR in your app store and start a free trial today. So let's just review. This is first lap, first set of corners for the one of Sam Mayer. We talk about the outside lane just having less grip than expected, and the one just kind of gets high, and it, it looks like he's going straight because he's not turning the wheel. I'm not sure he can. It's either too tight, too loose, or just overall no grip. The car goes straight up into the wall. Then the other end, this is off turn four. I thought this happened in one and two, but nope, off turn four. Just same thing, very, very high up the racetrack, heavy contact, and the result for both cars um, is the end of the day. They're both on the DVP. I think the one is trying to repair his, but the 98 has given up, gone behind the wall, repairs unable to be made. The one still sits on pit road, um, but we're going to see if they can do any sort of repair to this car. Marty, what are you hearing on the 98? Yeah, Riley Herbst, as you saw, has taken it to the garage area. There he is in the Xfinity Series garage area. He said that he went down in turns three and four, and he felt like the right front went down. It just completely shot up the racetrack when the car landed. So we have seen this Texas track be trouble for the playoff drivers. 11 of the 12 playoff drivers last year had an issue already. One today, and the driver's in front of you, Kim. And for Sam Mayer, in practice, he told me he was so surprised how tight they were. That condition into the race followed him so a tight race car that ultimately led to that incident the team thinks the upper control arm is bent as you see him going back to the garage if there is one bright note sam was one of the few playoff drivers that was actually looking forward to the charlotte rover remember those two race wins he got earlier this season they came on road courses so the roval looking like a must-win situation for sam mayor dave pole sitter justin allgaier got a great jump down into turn one look completely under control but radioed his team this Buddy, is it slick compared to earlier? Holy cow. Holy cow. Allgaier with a nice job driving it fast through one and two, but that all, got all of their attention that time, and most drivers wanted to know what exactly happened to Sam, so I don't do the same thing. Spotters are going to be telling the drivers uh, what they saw, the line that he was running. We have to remember that when practice and qualifying happened earlier this morning, I mean, the track temperature was way cooler. And this track has gotten hotter, but I believe that it is slicker outside of that bottom groove, worse than it's ever been. It's always been treacherous, Jeff, but today, I mean, right now, practice was 115 track temp, 135 now. So I believe that, you know, obviously the track is going to have a lot, of, a lot less grip. Now, what do you do for the choose? A lot of guys are going to be wanting that bottom groove. Some will have to take the risk and go to that outside because there'll be so many spots to gain from it. Yeah, typically on a mile and a half, you'll see drivers wanting to pick the outside to be able to get on the outside of the guy entering the corner and take air off the car and get grip off that bottom car. But but today, I think if you're out guy, you're going to want to pick the bottom. You've already, you know what's happened to these other guys. You know how slick it is. You just cannot put yourself in that position. So we're seeing the choose right there. A lot of got, a lot of the cars in the top 10 taking that bottom groove. The other cars choosing the outside, taking the advantage of gaining the spots. Now, if I'm a spotter or a driver, I'm thinking if I'm going to this top side of the racetrack, I've got to run the inside car really tight to be able to stay somewhat in the grip in the bottom groove, the lower groove of the racetrack. I've got to really pinch the car on the bottom low and against the apron, but that does put you at a very big risk of that car on the bottom, bottom getting loose, sliding up the track into your door and taking you both out. Six laps complete and two cars already out of the race. And Riley Herbst and Sam Mayer. Again, Sam Mayer, a playoff driver, uh, being scored right now 32 points below the cut line. 12th overall in the playoff standings of the 12 drivers. So more than likely a must win situation for Sam Mayer when he goes to the Roval uh, final race of the round of 12. And now getting ready for a restart. And all the drivers very aware that the bottom line is the preferred line and you don't want to get too far out of it. Watch that double zero of Cole Custer. See if he turns early to try to get underneath the seven into turn one. One, be ready. Green flag, green flag. Great restart for Bain on the outside of the seven and now going gingerly through one and two.
Custer aggressively into turn three and Bain falling back another spot. Austin Hill gets by him in the 21. Yeah, he's just taking it very carefully off in the three on that outside groove. Now the nine car of Jones is on the outside into turn one. He's going to have to be careful out here. And if you're Brandon Jones, you want to be as low as you can through that corner. You know it's already slick up top, so try to be as low as you can. And he did a good job at that. He lost the spot, but didn't lose three or four. Now everybody trying to get to that white line. Left side tires down there. Ryan Sieg in the 39. Pushing that 31 just a little bit higher. Parker Redslop. I think that the more we run and force, you know, slower cars and whatnot into that outside groove, it'll clean up. It'll become somewhat manageable. Will it be a, a groove that you'll be able to make, you know, time in? Probably not. Will it be a groove that you'll be able to gain a spot or two on a restart late in the third stage? I believe so. We got some cars in the wall off of turn four down through the grass. Yellow, yellow, the 11 car. And the 53 as well, you see the damage. That's Riggs in the 11. That was all him. He got loose underneath the just clipped you. So there's, okay. a, there's the information from the spotter. But coming up off of turn four, some cars getting out of shape. This is the second time Lane Riggs has had an issue today. In practice, he spun coming off of turn two. There's a 66 car. Uh, Lane, yeah, Lane spun in practice and damaged the left for a quarter panel. They got this car fixed. I think in this situation, he was trying to avoid what we're seeing right here, the 38 car up the racetrack into the left rear quarter panel, the, 40, the 53 into the wall. Both cars make contact and then down through the grass. So caution two has come out here in Texas and that wall has caught another car. NBC Sports coverage of NASCAR on USA is brought to you by Credit One Bank, a credit card company. And by Andy's Frozen Custard, the world's finest, made every hour. So the second caution is out. And this time it was the 38 of Joe Graff Jr. and the 53 of Patrick Emmerling. 
So 38's up the racetrack a little bit, and he's just kind of chasing the race car. I don't know if there's real contact or not, but it is enough of a disturbance. Right here, we'll see. If it wasn't con contact, there was some contact just a little bit there in the left rear quarter panel, but it's enough to get this 53 out of shape. They're both up in the dirty part of the racetrack, right? You see Lane Riggs just trying to avoid and just going through right there. He tears the, the tailpiece off the car. I'm not sure how much damage was done to the to the front splitter of that race car. That, that grass down in the infield on the front straight away, straight away here does a bunch of damage to these Xfinity cars when their splitters dig in. Well, this isn't out of the norm for Texas because Texas has the most cautions by track. Uh, if we look back since 2017 in 12 races, 111 cautions in those 12 races. And, and it kind of happens just like we're seeing here, which is um, a rash of yellows, either from a slick racetrack or aggression or all of the above. And then once they settle in, we'll get these spurts of long green flag runs and then once that goes away, it's chaos again for a few restarts until they get it figured out. Yeah, this, this just isn't a normal mile and a half. You know, it's just every racetrack has a different personality. We talked about it out there on the, on the racetrack. We showed why turn one is such a challenge. And then three and four, you know, you, you just go through there and you feel like Superman. You have so much grip compared to one and two. And then when the car steps out, it comes around quickly. It's just, a, it's just an extremely challenging racetrack. And it's, and it's, you know, it's put on some great races. It's put on some very entertaining races. It's been fun to rate, watch the last few races here. And it, it, what I liked about it as a driver is that it was hard. It created, it put you in a position where you had to make compromises, your entry speed, when you could go back to the throttle. And that's, as a race car driver, that's what you want. You want it to be a challenge. You want it to be slick. And this racetrack is certainly both of those things. It was a little too challenging early on for Riley Herbst. He's out of the infield care center and Kim's with him. That's right, Rick said he slid up the track. So walk us through what happened out there, Riley. Yeah, on the pace laps, I was warming up the tires um, pretty aggressively and I, I just felt like we were starting on super low pressures. I, I, I felt like that just because of how much flop I had in the sidewalls and the tire. Um, I landed in turn three and it just went down on the right front tire um, and I tried to chase it up and I thought I saved it, slowed it down enough. Um, but when I continued to chase it, I obviously ran out of real estate. So extremely disappointed. Um, I should have learned from the, the pace laps and probably pitted um, before green so I could have had a chance to race this. So we'll see uh, what happens. I, I don't know. This is just frustrating year for sure. And uh, we'll go to the Roval and try to go compete for a win. So unfortunate for Riley Herbst. There's a lot of cars uh, every car in both the Xfinity Series and the Cup Series that have the Sherry Pollux ribbon on it and heavy hearts this week as we lost Sherry on Sunday uh, to ovarian cancer only 44 years old. I think everybody wants to make a difference in the world and no question Sherry Pollux has made this world a better place. Uh, a longtime partner of Martin Trex Jr. She helped start the Martin Tre Trex Jr. Foundation as well as Sherry Strong. Uh, helping childhood cancer and ovarian cancer sufferers for her life. She's just been amazing. She was amazing. Uh, they raised over $10 million uh, through their efforts. But again, heavy hearts as we lost Sherry on Sunday. Two by two once again as we're getting ready for the restart. Austin Hill now will be on the outside of row one. Allgaier on the inside. You see the Toyota on board. John Hunter Nemechek. Nemechek in the top five. Yeah, you notice the cars that chose the outside the restart before did not choose the outside on this restart, and they are now on the inside, and some other players are now going to try that outside line and probably, probably regret it. We'll see how Austin Hill feels about it. And John Hunter Nemechek, those two in row one and row two on the outside line as we go back to racing. Hill strong into turn one. Challenging for the lead. 
He did an awesome job staying low on the racetrack and be able to keep that seven car from being able to finish the corner. But down here in turn three, he doesn't have the confidence to commit to that outside line. And I think Justin Algar was surprised by the ability of Austin Hill to stay there. He probably was a little bit careful through that corner. We've seen so much issues, and Austin Hill was willing to be aggressive. Now you see the eight car, Josh Berry, he's on the outside. But you can see it's starting to get better. He's starting to, it's not great by any means, but Josh Berry able to have a reasonable pace in one and two, still not the pace of the middle of three and four that he wants, but the exit of four worked pretty well. Following after Parker Kligerman, those two running seventh and eighth right now. Oh, oh somebody gets the grass. I've done that before. I was going to say, that looks familiar, Junior. That's damaged the, the uh, splitter on that car terribly, yeah. though. And now another playoff driver with an issue, Daniel Hemrick, who just clipped the grass. We'll yeah. see if he can make it back to pit road. Big damage to the left front. It's knocked a splitter off the car, back into the left front tire. It's going to have to come to pit road. They're going to have to make repairs on this car, try to figure out how to clearance that. And that's an issue of vision. You just can't see. You're right behind the car in front of you. You misjudge where you are on the racetrack, and you catch that grass. You're not going to come to pit road. I'm a little surprised by that. Here you go. Here's what happened. So you see he's offset of the 18. It's there. He doesn't even know the grass was there. He just misjudged it because he was to the right side of the car. Then when he turned, boom, there he is in the grass. And unfortunately, that damages the car. Yeah, the grass kind of jumps out in front of you when it's big damage guys I mean that damage to the left front it looks like it's splitter probably splitter structure the fender so the arrow from the air going around the fenders an issue the splitter looks lower remember this is a car that had a great run at Bristol and now look at him at minus five tenth in the point standings he's hoping the chaos continues and he has a chance to come to pit road but as we run under green he continues to lose time and another driver already out, playoff driver Sam Baer, Kim. Yeah, Sam out of the infield care center. Give us an idea of what the track conditions were and then what the car was doing in that incident. Yeah, it's just really unfortunate. Obviously, I made a mistake. It just got in too hot. And the track doesn't have any grip out there because they ruined it with the PJ, but really unfortunate. Don't know what to say. I apologize to my guys because Nothing I can do can make up for it except for winning in a couple weeks, but obviously that's a small task for me, so really unfortunate. I look forward to getting a break to reset. After that reset, what's the optimism level as you head to the Roval, knowing you have two wins on road courses? Yeah, I mean, they're going to have to make something happen, and our backs are against the wall. The backs are against the wall. Well. Let's listen in on the 10 radio now of Daniel Hemrick. The tire look clear. You just got to ride it all day. Splitter's knocked off of it, but we can't fix it, bud. You just got to ride it all day. I definitely have a tire spoke out the back of the car. I can tell. He's worried about whether the tire's smoking. He just wants to make sure that he's not going to blow the left front tire. They're giving him information to, to ease his mind, but they're also telling him, like, hey, this is what's going to be the rest of the day. Get that. Get that. You know, wrap your mind around the fact that this is how this car is going to drive. We're not going to be able to repair it. You see just how bad the damage is to the left front. And it's dragging the ground on the left front. That'll clear it somewhat as the race goes on. But the aerodynamics, to your point, Steve Latart, it is not going to drive well. No, this is not going to help the driving. To answer Daniel's question, though, I do believe it's safe to cut a left front tire. It looks like everything above the tire that might get into the sidewall. Uh, maybe a little wisp of spoke right there. But I think he's OK as far as it you know, cutting a left front tire due to damage. You think he was looking for something a little more inspirational from his crew, though? Because, I mean, when I heard, hey, you're just going to have to ride it out the rest of the day, I thought, boy, that's well, kind of harsh. I think that they, there was, you know, they didn't understand exactly what he was asking. The question that he was asking was, am I smoking? Is there any tire smoke? I cannot tell from inside the car if we have a left front tire rub. So Chris Rice was just letting him know that it's going to be a long day. We see the 11 on the apron. Coming back up to speed again. Riggs was through the grass, tore the back of that car off. They've replaced it. 
Well, two bad news, one good news for college, right? The 10 and the 11 both having issues. 16, though, who had to start at the back. He's all the way up to 12. So Chandler Smith, nice recovery as we go on board. J John Hunter Nemechek here with the Toyota on board, chasing Trevor Bain in the 19 in front of him. I love the roof shot at a track like this where you can see that 19 of Trevor Bain, how that car works and how it's handling. Watch him drive down in the corner, backs moving around, getting right against that apron. They're riding on board with John Hunter as he bounces through the bumps in turns three and four. They've actually ground those bumps a little bit since the last time we were here, trying to improve the ride quality through that corner. And with these Xfinity cars, you can see what John Hunter is doing. There's a big advantage to getting your left front fender in clean air. So see how he's always lower than the car in front of him? Even on corner entry, if he, he would rather stay out against the wall and turn later, but he's got to turn early. He's got to get fresh air to that left front. Watch him on corner exit here. He just tries to be lower than the 19 of Trevor Bain every single part of the racetrack, just trying to get downforce on that race car. Searching for clean air. While the 10 still slow on the racetrack, Allgaier is putting a lap down. Allgaier leading by a second. Tonight on NBC and Peacock, top 10 teams collide in South Bend as number six Ohio State battles number nine Notre Dame. It's Buckeyes and Fighting Irish. Coverage beginning at 7 p.m. Eastern. You're watching the NASCAR Xfinity Series playoffs. It's Andy's Frozen Custard 300. It's been all Allgaier. 34 laps complete and all out front for the seven. And look at the line they're running through the corner in turn one and two now. Some cars are making a little bit of time getting up off the bottom of the racetrack and they're starting to clean up that groove. And I'm telling you, late in this race, as bad as the outside was at the very beginning, it won't be a bad place to restart. You might be able to take advantage of that before everyone else figures it out. And now that longer run that you had talked about, Steve, is starting to happen here as Austin Hill has stayed about eight tenths of a second behind Allgaier, Marty. 
And Rick, as you can imagine, after seeing those early wrecks, there was a little trepidation about maybe taking the outside on that last restart for Austin Hill, but he thought it was the right way to go. Listen on the radio. You have to get back down before entering turn three or you're going to lose. Right now, it just don't look like the outside lane has any grip whatsoever. I mean, you don't want to have your right sides in that stuff at all. Like, you've got to leave about half lane between you and the bottom lane. Just not let your right sides hit that old resin or PJ1 or copy that. So after that conversation, Dave, Derek Nealon talked Austin Hill into going just a little bit up off the bottom in one and two, and that's where he's made his time, like Junior just mentioned a moment ago. Cole Custer is running third and kind of holding up the group in third, fourth, and fifth right now. The car is overall a little bit tight, and as you watch him on this Goodyear onboard camera getting down into the corner here, he has to wait a little longer than the car behind him, Trevor Bain, to get back on the throttle. All that, and yet he says it's a little loose into turn one, so a little bit of a handful right now for the double zero, Kim. Dave, you mentioned Trevor Bain. He's in the fourth position trying to find his rhythm. He actually told me because he's so part-time, he really has to treat each weekend like it is his first time at a track. Probably does three times more studying than full-time drivers to prepare. Right now, that car just out of balance. He said it's freer in and tighter off than it was in practice. Just overall worst handling condition. So that's Trevor Bain uh, again just his third start but what about Sheldon Creed Steve back at 24th well he's having major issues 24th and almost a second off the leaders only six seconds in front of them so with seven to go you you, you know you would normally think no problem he could stay on the lead lap but he is so far off the pace there is a chance that the leaders could get to him I mean there is Creed right there and the leader is basically what a straightaway less than a straightaway behind him yeah so there's Creed coming through four. Yeah, the Algars, like you said, it's about a second a lap. Algars got some traffic he's going to have to go through. You can see right there, he's, that's going to slow him down a little bit. But right there, even catching the traffic, so he lost some, I don't know, maybe three, about a half a second. So, and, and pushing that barrier, keep going higher and higher in one and two. But let's ride on with the two cars and see what they're talking about. Yeah, just hang in there, buddy. We don't understand you either. Uh, we're, we're working on some adjustments for you. Four. I'm really loose to the center. I get to the center, pick up a little tight. I almost feel like I have a right front or a left front that's slow, but that's not the case. So now the big fear for this two car is you can hear it's it's true bewilderment. They have no idea what is wrong. They believe their driver. They know it's bad. But is it a tire? Do they have a leak? Do they have a tire coming apart? Is there something bent, broken, or adjusting on its own? Is the track bar moving around on its own? We've seen all these crazy things. So at this point, Kim, the two is trying to come up with a plan, but this might involve multiple pit stops. And the first thing is trying to see if there's something wrong with the car. Absolutely, and you heard what he was saying about the car. Just no grip at all. Feels like it's on skates. And the bigger piece of this is that crew chief Jeff Tankowitz told me if the car isn't as close to perfect for what Sheldon needs, it absolutely lessens Sheldon's confidence. So not only do they need to make the car better, but they need to make it better in order to give their driver confidence. So this is all about preparation. Before the race, they should have measured where all the jack screws were, what adjusts the springs, the track bar just to where that is. So literally, you would send your car chief over, and before you make any adjustments you're about the last car in the lead lap anyway take all of those measurements and make sure something isn't loose backing out make sure you physically don't chase a mechanical problem um, check all the tires that come off the car like this might be two or three stops two or three swings of adjustments for Sheldon Creed less than three laps to go in stage one and already Sam Mayer into the wall is out Daniel Hemrick went through the grass he's a lap down and Sheldon Creed very close to going a lap down. Running in the 24th position. Eight car Josh Berry, the 18 to Sammy Smith. You've been watching this eight car Josh Berry struggling through turns three and four. He's got decent speed in one and two, but Sammy Smith's been able to gain tons of ground on the eight through the through the turn three and four. Just in front of them, Parker Klingerman trying to get to the end of the stage here as well. And stage points are in front of them. As they know now, one more lap to go, and Sheldon Creed definitely in jeopardy. Can he stay in front of the seven? The 43 of Ryan Ellis is holding up that seven car just a little bit, and Sheldon Creed's loving it now. Ellis to the outside of the two car. That'll slow the two down just a little bit more. 
Definitely not what he wants as the seven looks like he's going to pass him on the outside. So Allgaier is putting down. He's not only going to pass him, Rick, but he's going to lap the 43 as well. Yes. Now this is a race for the free pass between these two cars. So the free pass goes to the highest scored lap down car. It's going to be very close. Allgaier wins the stage. That's his 10th stage win of 2023, the most of all drivers. And again, the top 10 all receiving stage points, which those drivers that are a part of the playoffs are looking for every point they can get. So the free pass normally is highest scored at the time of yellow. In this odd situation, when it's in the top 10 of a stage, they're racing to the line. The line will determine it. Look at this. A foot, a foot is going to be the success of the two of Sheldon Creed to get the free pass. That could be all the difference for his race today. Sunday Night Football on NBC and Peacock. T.J. Watt and the Steelers are in Vegas to face Jimmy Garoppolo and the Raiders. Coverage begins at 7 p.m. Eastern with Football Night in America. Stage one is complete. It was Allgaier who was able to win, and that means he grabs another playoff point, which he will be able to take into the round of eight with him. He already knows that he's going into that round because of his win last week at Bristol. There were 19 speeding penalties total in the last three races here. 13 total in the prior six. And they're on pit road, Marty. Rick, remember, it's 130 degrees inside these cars. They asked Austin Hill, do you want a fresh bottle of water? His answer, absolutely. He said the car fired off decent, but then quickly went two free on the entry of one and also two free all the way through three and four, Dave. Justin Allgaier says the car is just a little bit tight where he picks the throttle up, but not too bad. Over the long run, though, way freer for Goodyear tires. As for Cole Custer, he says, I'm going to do, uh, get, get an air pressure adjustment and a chassis adjustment to help a little bit free and a little bit tight on the double zero. Seven wins the race off of Pitt Road. Yeah, boys, excellent job. Custer grabs the spot. Austin Hill loses one as they come off of Pitt Road. We're ready for the race start when we return.
Where'd you get that grin? Right above your chin. You know the place. Puts a smile on your face. And he's the one. Frozen custard fun. Made fresh every hour. It's your happy power. Top your day. With a smile and Introducing Andy's Cannoli Thunder Concretes, the Italian stallion of flavor with crispy cannoli shell, sweet cream filling, and chocolate chip. You're watching the NASCAR Xfinity Series playoffs, Andy's Frozen Custard 300. Rick, big fan. About two miles from my house, there's an Andy's Frozen Custard. Got one a mile from my house. Man, it's we visited so good. Often, as a matter of so fact. Let's good. take a look at the Andy's sweet move of the stage, and we have to give it to the two of Sheldon Creed. Remember, he went a lap down there, but to get the free pass, he's got to be in front of the 43. The seven car went around him so fast, he turned the 43 sideways, and he had to jump out of the gas. Sheldon took advantage of that. He was able to get up underneath him off the corner. And small things like this can make a difference in a playoffs. You know, now, instead of being a lap down, you got your lap back. Now, he's going to have to start at the tail end of the field. So they're going to have had to make changes to this car and make it better. If not, the seven car is going to come around and lap them unless they get a series of cautions. So were they able to make the changes to get this car where it needed to be, Marty? So, Jeff, we've talked about the heat today. The wind is also a factor. Steady at 14 miles an hour with gusts close to 30 miles an hour. Is that affecting John Hunter Nemechek and the handling of his car? Listen in. In three or what, but I shoved the front end kind of on landing. Some laps, some laps combined. Yeah, 10-4. It's winds kind of hit or miss. It's not terrible, but it is blowing down like turn two to turn three. So Dell Jr., a wind that gusts close to 30 miles an hour, pushing into turn three and four. Would that affect the handling of the race car like John Hunter thinks it might be on his car? 100%, that's what that is. The wind in the left side door, that car is trying to shove you across the racetrack and it will make the car feel very tight. It'll do the opposite into turn one. The car is gonna turn very good, maybe even be loose into turn one. And there's really not an adjustment you can you can do to fix that. You can do a lot of things to the race car, Steve Latar, but you can't change the wind. No, you can't change the wind. Just make sure to your point, we have a discussion about it. So you understand that's going to be there. The one good thing, steady wind may be a little more predictable than something that's really gusty. I like when this crew chief said hit or miss or spotter. I was like, wow, it's, it's playing pretty hard as we get underway with stage two. This time Allgaier has chosen the outside line. Cole Custer on the inside. We'll see if it pays off for Allgaier. Algar a little apprehensive off a of turn two to the throttle, not able to stay on the outside of the double zero. He loses the lead and the control of the race right there. A little shove from the 21 off into turn one helped Custer as well. Now we'll see if that seven car has anything to be able to get back up there and try to take the lead. It'll be tough to do. After leading the first 52 laps, now Cole Custer has led his first lap here at Texas today as we see Parker Kligerman right there on the bottom of the racetrack. Brandon Jones of the nine coming up on his outside. 48 has really improved their pace heading into the playoffs. I know they had a mechanical last week at Bristol, but you know, he looks like he's running three or four spots higher than we had seen that 48 run most of the year. The all guy is not letting Cole Custer get away though, as we look out the back of the double zero with that Goodyear onboard camera. Yeah, Cole's driving his car where he thinks he needs it, which this time he was lower in the corner. The time before that, he was up about maybe a quarter of a car width, and that was giving the seven car a little bit of clean air. If you're Cole Custer, you got to pin this thing on the bottom. You got to do just that. You got to paint that white line with your left side tire. Do not give any good clean air to that seven of Algar. Now, as this run goes on, you might have to block the second groove because we've seen the groove open up. But early in this run, the bottom's gonna be where you Oh, we got a spin on the front straightaway of the six. He's gonna hit the inside wall hard. hard contact. Hard into the inside pit wall. Brandon Poole somehow gets turned around on the front straightaway. Cars killed, guys. I'm glad he said I'm all right. The Woodlands, Texas native. See the 35 car as well sitting right there, just Joey Gase. That's one of the most severe contacts I've seen into a pit wall in a long time. Joey Gase is down just past 
the flag stand toward turn one. It's always scary when a car goes into the pit wall, you know, all those people standing behind that wall. Yeah, the AMR safety crew to Joey Gase as well as over there to Brennan Poole. The six was running 18th when this happened, and the 35 was in 30th position. So he was behind the six car. And all this transpired on the front straightaway. I know Brennan Poole is probably hoping for more. Texas native, Woodlands, Texas. He would started it. So the six right there, Brennan Poole on the inside of Jeffrey Earnhardt, the 45 car at the top of the screen. They're coming up off the corner, and ooh, the six, does he get loose here? get some help from behind. Yeah, down the front straightaway, he just comes across the nose of the 39 car. Now he's in the grass, and the car just does not slow down in the grass the way it does on the asphalt. And unfortunately, it turns head on to the wall, but thank goodness no people were sitting on that pit wall or near that pit wall. That box looked pretty clean, Steve. Yeah, that's the fear, right, is that someone's sitting on the wall or even an air gun, a tire, something could be kind of launched from on top of the wall. The wall is shorter than what an outside wall would be, and you can see that with how it only catches, like, the bottom half of the nose. Watch how much this car climbs. I mean, just a huge impact. I don't know if the spotters from those teams saw the car coming Crossed and gave this will be a great view right here. Oh, All the people on the ground can move away. Those guys sitting up on top of those pit boxes really have nowhere to go. But here's the 35 car just spinning harmlessly in the. He must have just tried to avoid or slow down because of the accident. This is this is. Uh, you see the gentleman on the double zero car. He hunched behind the wall. He saw it coming and. Dave, that was that was a big hit there by the six. Yeah, that happened just before the pit box of race leader Cole Custer, and here was the radio from crew chief Jonathan Tony. Oh, this six car hit the pit wall about, I don't know, about eight foot from where I'm sitting. I kind of jumped a little bit. Jeez, everybody good? Yeah, thank God everybody on this 45 seen it coming and jumped back over the wall, and our guys did too, so everybody's good here. So, th so that was Tony's clue. The 45 crew saw it come and jump back. Jonathan saw that, and he shrunk back himself. Glad everybody's okay down here from my visual. No one got hurt. Jumped a little. <laughs> I'm just letting you know that if I saw it coming, I'm going, I'm going off the back of the pit box. This was a really big hit for Brennan Poole. Got turned there by the 39 of Sieg. Poole hard into the pit wall, but again, climbed out of the car.
Tonight, it's the championship finale. First ever Super Motocross World Championship at the Coliseum in Los Angeles. Now, playoff one at Charlotte was won by Chase Sexton. He won both heats there. Then playoff two, Jet Lawrence. He bounced back with a win. Now just two points back of Sexton, and don't count out Ken Roxon. He's currently in third. They are going for a million dollars. Well, that's a good update. But what's that update mean? Pretty simple. It's winner take all between Chase Sexton and Jet Lawrence. If either of those riders win tonight, they're the champion. They cashed a million bucks. Ken Rox can still win it all. I have five drivers are technically still available, but Ken's going to need a little help from yeah. both Chase and Jet. It's going to be a lot to watch. I'm going to be tuned in for sure. Pretty exciting. Yes. We, we, we saw what the playoffs have done to stock car racing and what these drivers have had to do. We've seen some of the same thing from the riders. The pressure of the playoffs is real. So again, under the fourth caution of the day, and it was for this spin by Brennan Poole. Slides across the grass and hard into the pit wall. Getting ready for the restart here at Texas Motor Speedway. That's where you're staying, right, Steve? No, but that's pretty cool. I'm going to give him that. Just what, the outside condos? the racetrack. Yeah. Yep. I like it. 29 laps to go in stage two of the Andes Frozen Custard 300. Well, Dale and Jeff said it the best, right? The seven lost control of the race to the double zero and since then Custer has led all the laps. I think the seven's good enough to take a lead back. The 21 surprisingly lost the spot on pit road. We don't see that happen very often out of the 21 pit crew. They'll have a couple more shots at it. Which lane do you choose inside or outside? Well the outside's definitely gotten better but I'm taking the bottom just because it's such a short runway into turn one and two. We see a replay of basically the, the restart before with the seven on the outside and what his job will be is to stay on the outside of the double zero off into turn one. He cannot let the double zero clear. As soon as the double zero has any clearance, he can start to finish the throttle, open the wheel up, get in front of him, start to disadvantage the seven car aerodynamically. Justin wants to stay on that door on the restart off into turn one of the double zero. And I feel like Justin's car got better. Like that first lap, lap and a half, his car was not as good as the double zero, but then I felt like he was a little better than the double zero. So he trusts the car now can roll through the outside better than it did on new tires. Kim. 
And Brennan Poole has been released from the care center. I know you were really upset on the radio. What happened? Yeah, I'm not really sure. I haven't seen a replay. I, I did lose a little momentum uh, underneath the 45, and um, I didn't really feel like I made a huge move. I just was trying to get ready for the corner. Yeah, yeah I don't know. It just looks like there wasn't a whole lot of room. Certainly, certainly anything I didn't try to do and just got hit in the left for a corner and got turned around. So um, sucks. We had a really good car. Um, just unfortunate. I'm sure Ryan didn't mean to get in there. I felt like maybe I could add a little bit more give and take, but from that angle, it's hard to, hard to tell. And getting ready for the restart now. Again on the inside, it's Cole Custer, and we've got contact before they even went into the gas. The seven of Allgaier came down on the double zero of Cole Custer. Yeah, that was strange. Not sure what that was all about. Justin's gonna get down in the corner really good here. Take it, take it, take it. That, that right there shows you the confidence he has in his car. I don't think the first time he went through there. Oh, more the, contact, the sorry, Jeff. Yeah, now. when he put tires on, I just don't think he trusted his car like he did right there. Oh, Very the loose, yeah. yeah, Trevor Bain. You see how that stacked everybody up behind Trevor. Now Trevor's got to protect that bottom from Josh Berry. He did it. Parker Clicker had tried to make that second lane work. Right there, the 19's up the racetrack some. But Josh Berry couldn't take advantage of it because the 48. Uh oh, the 45. Jeffrey Earnhardt's in the wall. Caution's out. That looks a lot like getting up out of the groove in turn two, Come right? On, stepped out, down to PJ1, stepped out. There you have it, stepped out meaning the car broke sideways up in the second groove. All these cautions, in my opinion, are a huge advantage to Sheldon Creed. They've been able to come down pit road multiple times, keep working on that race car to make it better. You know, things in a race that you do not control do affect your race. And in this situation, this has been an advantage for Sheldon Creed. 45 is running 15th too. Jeffrey having another good run, ran pretty decent at Bristol. and. Just see what happens. He's definitely up one lane, yeah. 92 right behind him. You got to be on the door. Got to be closer. You got to yeah. be tighter. You just this this that's a lane you can run on a normal mile and a half with normal grip. That's not Texas right now. You just got to be lower against the door of the guy underneath you. Tags the wall there and then comes back and you see Sheldon Creed right there behind him in that two car. He was. They can please don't come back across the racetrack. Look how close that is. Well, you mentioned Sheldon. He's already made three pit stops. He's been on pit road for over two minutes at the moment, kind of working on his car. But we haven't really seen enough green flag laps to know if he's really fixed it or not, to be honest. They'll have a choose, and we'll restart. We return to Texas Motor Speedway for the Andy's Frozen Custard 300.
Andy's offers the world's finest frozen custard and is the official frozen treat of the Texas Motor Speedway. You can't beat that. Stop by an Andy's near you today. More coming soon. Getting ready for the restart. There will be 22 laps to go. And they cross the start finish line this time in stage two. Again, out front is Allgaier. He's able to get in front uh, after that restart. Custer, Austin Hill, Nemechek, Trevor Bain on the top five. Parker Kligerman in six. Josh Berry. Dave, how about Chandler Smith after starting in the back has made his way up into the top ten? Be the drive of the day, Rick, in my opinion. Got stage points, made it to tenth from 35th by the end of stage one, got that one point, uh, and the car has been great. They had drove the most laps in practice. They said it's the best mile and a half we've ever had in practice to start a day, Kim. Dave, we've talked about how hot the conditions are here at Texas. 132 degrees inside the car. The drivers have lots of tools to cool them off, including a cool suit, which pumps cold water through a shirt that they wear. Well, for Sammy Smith running in the 10th position, that cool shirt is failing. And talking with drivers who've had cool shirt failures, they say that's worse than having no cool shirt at all. So it's going to be an uphill battle, a hot one for Sammy Smith, Marty. Kim, let's give a tip of the cap to Jeb Burton. Started 26 today, running in the 11th position right now. Now, and we talked about how this team brought a brand new car to the racetrack this weekend. Well, Shane Whitbeck made it much better on that first adjustment. Steve, you've had the new car blues before. You know what the team is going through, but going the right direction here once the race has started, and more importantly, on the right side of the cut line right now. Yeah, you hope that the new car is better, but with only a short 15 minute practice, sometimes you don't have enough time to work out all the kinks. All guy on the inside, Cole Custer on the outside. Green, green flag, green flag. 21 to go in stage two. Custer staying strong on that outside line. That's going to be tough for the seven car to be able to get up off the corner. Can he drag race it down the back straightaway? Now the seven car has the preferred bottom groove. And the seven's going to surge ahead. Cole Custer is going to try to fall in line before he loses that spot to Austin Hill. Parker Kligerman strong on the outside of Trevor Bain now. We got a lot of cars bottled up. Yeah. Yeah, they got a bunch bottled up behind them here down the back straightaway. A little bit defensive on that bottom groove. Trevor's car was just not handling quite well enough for him to be able to commit to the throttle. And now the help's going to be on the bottom. So watch what happens. Josh Berry is going to push Trevor Bain. And that's also going to help Josh Berry. Now Josh has got to get to the bottom. Chandler Smith is 16. A little bit of contact right there on the side of Kligerman. Parker trying to get back to the bottom of the racetrack. Jeb Burton now down on the inside of the 48 car. Sammy Smith back here losing a few spots as well. I feel like Parker right there, he said he saw an opening and said, OK, I'm just going to lift right here and get behind the 27 of Burton and regroup. That was a great restart for the 27 of Jeb. So it's all guy or Custer. Austin Hill, Nemechek, Trevor Bain. Top five. Austin Hill got a little bit of a look to the inside of double zero down the back straightaway, trying to see if he can get the o double zero to overdrive the corner here. He's a lot faster than Cole right now. Cole struggling with the balance of that car, a little bit of front grip going away on the double zero. And Austin Hill's trying to attack. He's driving down in the bottom of the racetrack here to the inside. Custer using that higher line in one and two, trying to create some rotation in the car, choosing that higher groove. Yeah, and that helps him down the straightaway because he's got a little, it doesn't pin the car down as much on corner exit. Nemechek running back in that fourth spot. Looking forward to Austin Hill. And Cole Custer now 1.2 seconds behind Allgaier. So when Allgaier's out in clean air, easily the fastest car on the racetrack.
great battle for eighth right here with Burton and Parker Kligerman. Parker ran the high side of one and two to create that opportunity to get the run and pass him low down the back straightaway. 27's got an issue, Marty. Yeah, and he just said, I have a vibration. He had contact on the last start start with the 92 car of Josh Williams. He said it moved the steering wheel a little bit. Now we just said on the radio, way too free as well. But the vibration, how much would that concern you, Junior? It's very concerning because, you know, if it's, it's tend to be, it, it can tend to be a loose wheel. And if it's getting worse and worse, it's, if it's getting worse and worse, that's definitely a sign of an issue with the tire, the wheel, something coming apart. Just 14 laps to go in the stage. You're going to try to get to the end of the stage without issues. Allgaier, again, pulling away from Custer. 1.8 seconds now, the separation between first and second. Dave. And for Cole Custer, is just still a little bit tight in that car. He was told by his crew chief, we freed you up about a half a percent the last run, but it's still too tight. We heard him chirp on the radio at the last restart for Cole Custer. Yeah, that's what it looks like, Dave, is just balanced. The car is just not quite there. But now he's ran enough laps, and he's changed his line a little bit, too, put a little bit of distance between him and the 21. So even though they don't love how that car is handling right now, He's made the adjustments on the racetrack to, to remain competitive and keep this track position. Yeah, he's far enough behind the seven car as well that there's no aero disadvantage for, for Cole Custer. Cole Custer is messing up the air for Austin Hill and Nimichek behind him, but Cole has clean air. That's a big advantage. He's Jeb trying to hang on to these spots in 11th spot. Marty. So, Jeff, remember we mentioned the contact with the 92 on the restart before this one. What Jeb radioed in, the team believes is the case as well, is that the wheel weights maybe got knocked off of the right front tire. What kind of vibration would that cause behind the wheel, Jeff? Yeah, it does. It just shakes. And when it shakes, the problem with that is it's not just uncomfortable to the driver. Every time that wheel shakes, it does not handle. The tire is not making grip. A vibration hurts grip with the race car. So. It's not an annoyance only, it's also a handling problem. Yeah, even you know, if you're behind the wheel of the car and you're in the car and it's shaking, you think that that is taking grip out of the car. Even you're just not confident to really push the car. As you see, he's struggling really to keep track position, keep these cars right here behind him. Jeremy Clements and Parker Retzloff right there. Going to try to take this inside line and take that spot away from Burton. Well, Under opened, 10 laps to go. Yeah, Jeb's opened up his entry into the corners, knowing that he's too tight, knowing his car isn't turning well enough. He, that gives him some comfort if the car is too tight. It gives him some comfort to be able to drive into the corner in this upper groove and then be able to go to the throttle. This is something we did not see when the race started. If you were up there when the race started, you would wreck. But now the track's getting cleaner. And Jeb's using it as a tool. I know my car's not handling it the way it wa I want it to. I'm going to go up here. I don't have to turn the wheel as much up here. Maybe it'll make the car drive better. And so far, I think it's helped. Jeremy Clements there in the 51, running in the 12th spot now. Dave? And Rick, that's just about where he qualified. Crew Chief Mark Setzer told me he might have been a little aggressive, maybe move some people out of the way to get to the front. But he said the biggest takeaway from this morning was for the second week in a row, my driver felt like he had a car that could compete. Felt that way at Bristol, too. They had a tire down late that hurt their day, but Clements with another strong run here. Jeremy's best finish here at Texas is 11th. That happened three years ago. Jeb got real tight off of turn four right there, and that cost him a lot of speed. Clements was able to get by, but he also had to lift off the throttle a little bit. Parker Redsclap is now trying to battle on the inside of the 51. Parker's a great young talent in the series. Teammates to Jeb. Jeb has been struggling with his car on corner exit the last few weeks. Feels like the car doesn't turn on corner exit the way he wants it to. That has continued into the day, it looks like. Starting to see this. Second groove come in at both ends of the racetrack. Cars that aren't handling well, mainly the cars that are tight are gonna move up there and try to get rotation. That's a good sign for stage three. Get this track a little bit wider, and especially for tomorrow in the cup race. These cup drivers that were in here for practice earlier today realized how treacherous the second groove was. They're watching right now, understanding how this track's improving and gaining grip and the groove's getting wider. 
Custer now almost two and a half seconds behind Paul Geyer. But he's got a mirror full of Austin Hill running back there in third. Playoff points move on to the next round. So already Allgaier with his stage one win got one playoff point. You see Austin Hill closing in with five laps to go in the stage. But Allgaier looking for a second playoff point if he can stay out front until the end of this stage. Jib right there at the bottom of the screen losing more positions here. Car moving around a little bit there. He's, he's working the wheel back and forth trying to figure out exactly just what's wrong. Hardy. Junior, he thinks something is breaking. Can it last for five more laps? He said, I'm really almost spinning out going down the straightaway. So maybe it's a bigger issue. We talked about that vibration, but Jeb saying something might be breaking on the car. Remember, he was eighth or seventh, actually, when all this kind of started, now back in 16. Yeah, that sounds to me like a loose wheel getting worse. Um, that's what exactly that sounds like to me. If, if that contact that he had might have might have somehow knocked the wheel loose or, or they even just had a loose wheel from the last stop, but it's just continuously getting worse. Hopefully Jeb can nurse this car home these last few laps without any issues. See Jeb falling a lap down. The double zero went by. For I think that was the. Yeah, it was. It was a different. I it thought was it was Jeff Custer Earnhardt. Very by. similar paint schemes, yep. I believe, but he's still on the lead lap. Yeah, Jeb's still on the lead lap. He's in 18th. Creed, 17th. They're the two playoff cars are the farthest behind on the lead lap. Hemrick one lap down with that damage from going through the grass. Back at 27th, Sam Mayer out of the race. He'll be scored last from an early accident. Turn one, lap one. You know, I asked Justin Algar in the pre-race. I said, "You are you the favorite for well, this?" Playoff this championship, and I asked that question because the speed this team has had lately, they didn't get off to a great start. They, you know, all of Junior Motorsports changed crew chiefs, engineers, they mixed things up, and it took a little while for it to start working. Well, it's working now. He is in position to win another stage, and he has the most stage wins of anybody this year. And you look at the, the speed they put together lately, everybody has got to feel like this team right here has a great shot to win the championship. And they're also gaining more bonus points with every stage win, with every race win, even in the playoffs, making that next round just a bit easier. And it's the 10th time that Allgaier has swept the stages. He won two of the prior nine after sweeping them. We'll see if he can finish this one out here in Texas. Allgaier, Custer, Austin Hill, Nemechek. Playoff drivers getting points. As does Barry, Chandler Smith, Parker Kligerman, and Sammy Smith. It was in stage two where Brennan Poole slammed into the pit wall. Again, walking away from that accident.
Two stages complete. You're watching the NASCAR Xfinity Series playoffs. Andy's frozen custard 300. And yes, that is Jeb Burton's car on pit road without a left rear wheel. It came off down the back stretch. So that was a that was his issue, right? The loose wheel. Now there's a couple concerns here as the cars are coming to pit road. Is damaged the studs on the car? Can they get the wheel back on there and tighten it back up? And cars on pit road. Marty. Jeff Burton still sitting here as the leaders come down pit road, Rick. Remember, the 21 team lost the spot on the last stop, so they asked Austin Hill to back it up a little bit further in the stall and also move further away from the wall. We'll see if that helps them here on exit. Said the car way too free the longer they run, especially three and four, Dave. Double stage winner Justin Allgaier said, I had less rear lateral drift that time. They'll make an air pressure adjustment for that. As for Cole Custer, he'll get four Goodyear tires with an air pressure adjustment and a chassis adjustment and try to free up that double zero. Race off pit road and all guy and Custer holding their positions. So again Jeff Burton had complained about the car not handling well. Well look at there's the wheel. Yeah I mean crazy fortunate that he got to the end of the stage. Remember he was losing spots all through this stage. If this comes off on a green flag almost a sure thing it causes an accident. And here the car sits you see no center hubcap. You can see the axle. They're going to have to try to get repairs to that and the studs to make sure the next left rear can remain secure. We don't see it a lot, but sometimes a driver will get out of the car and have to have a relief driver. That's the case today with Josh Williams in the 92. He has climbed out of that car and they are working on getting Stefan Parsons strapped into the 92, Kim. That's right. And Josh had been on the radio telling his team he felt like he was getting no air funneled to him. His vision he felt like was starting to go. He was seeing spots, felt like he was going to pass out. So that is why they made the decision to make the driver change. The team got on the radio, though, before Josh got out of the car and said, there is nothing to be ashamed of. Your health is the priority. He got on a medic card. He will go to the care center um, as Stephen Parsons will take over for the 105 laps to go here at Texas. So the quick change and they're still making sure that the belts are all tight. Everything's strapped in for Stephen Parsons. Let's take a look at the Andy's frozen custard sweet move of the stage. Sweet sweep for Justin Allgaier. I see what you did there. It was definitely sweet. 
So now uh, the drivers will go around one more time before they choose Marty. So here's what happened Rick with the 27 car the left rear axle cap Steve came off somewhere during that run for Jeff Burton. That's when he noticed that something was wrong and they couldn't find an axle cap to put back on there and shove the axle back in. So that's what happened with Jeff Burton. So a playoff driver now down three laps having to make this repair here on pit road. That's a, not a very usual thing that happened Steve. No, very unusual. Very lucky didn't happen under green. Now that's a two lap penalty for the tire coming off on the racetrack regardless. So while the 27 of Burton is three laps down because of the repairs, they were going to be held for two laps either way. Um, that's a penalty that's been adjusted this year. It's an in-race penalty, two laps because it happened on the racetrack. It's pretty confident he's going to lose two crew members this week for suspension. So the penalties will continue for the 27, who is having such a great day. Um, just a great day, to be honest, running inside the top 10 or around the top 10 before this issue. Another driver that had issues, the 21 of Austin Hill. The strength of this team has been the pit crew, and he had to come around the 27. That's kind of why the nose is pointed in. And then you see right here, the 20 is in his box. I actually think the 20 is far enough in his box. All he has to do is get all the right front and both left side tires in the box. I think the 20 is far enough in. I'm sure the 21 is going to disagree. But because he had to come around the 27, he was at a really bad angle. The result, multiple spots lost. Austin Hill will be back in about the 10th position. Third stage is underway. Allgaier and Cole Custer diving into turn one. Allgaier on that outside, trying to keep the momentum up. Cole Custer with a good run off turn two. Pull back alongside the seven. He's got the preferred lane into turn three. Oh, take the lead Bay again. Goes around. Josh Berry goes around. So does Trevor Bain. There's contact made with a 21 of Austin We're Hill. Another playoff driver involved. Did you see the 48 thread the needle between the two spinning cars? Third and fourth, Josh Berry. How much damage is it to this eight of Josh Berry? You see the right rear quarter panel is damaged. Yeah, a lot of damage to the back. The car made contact with the wall, and then again, as the 19's coming off the wall as well, more contact. It looked like Trevor Bain gets loose on the bottom of the racetrack, chases his car up the racetrack into the door of the eight. So here's the, here's the 19, he's loose into the corner, corrects up the track to save that. The 21, big damage on that right front for the 21 there. Trying to get through as well, so our regular season points champion, Austin Hill, caught up in this. Yeah, the nine got into the back of the 21, just, you know, it didn't do anything wrong. He just trying to, everybody trying to miss the wreck. Kind of shoved the 21 into him. Let's ride along with John Hunter and see what he saw. Look how loose the 19 was, setting down into three. And been kind of battling some loose issues throughout the race, but just an unfortunate situation. And you think about that 21 car right there of Austin Hill, remember that bad pit stop we just talked about. That got him back here. That got him in that position to be behind this wreck. It just playoff contenders, this race every year seems to be like this. Seven cautions already. Watch this 19, right there. He's already loose on corner entry. Eight taking the air off of him, getting into the corner. Marty. And Jeff, that's a terrific point. Losing seven spots on pit road. That's really why Austin Hill was even back there in the first place. Look at that right front damage for the 21 team. In terms of where the steering wheel is pointed, it's obviously not straight. Austin Hill said it's about 10 o'clock, so the car not tracking the right direction. You know, we kind of wondered if Austin Hill would be in a precarious position here. We saw that happen to Martin Truex Jr. in the cup side in the first round of the playoffs. But one important thing, they've already earned seven 17 stage points today. That's going to be a huge thing for the 21. Austin Hill saying the car is still not tracking the right way as he's back on the racetrack, Rick. With damage, he's still 36 points above the cut line. 
So again, playoff drivers getting caught up in issues here at Texas. Tomorrow, round two of the NASCAR Cup Series playoffs begins here at Texas Motor Speedway. Which playoff driver can win and advance? Well, race coverage will begin at 3.30 p.m. Eastern on USA. A couple cars that look really strong today in practice and qualifying. The five of Larson as well as the 11 of Denny Hamlin. On I mean, the 11, I mean, he could have won the first three races of the playoffs. He finally won the third one, and he looks like he has car enough again. As we see Allgaier choose the outside here. And the 21 of Austin Hill coming back toward you, Marty. Yeah, coming back, and you can see how much damage there is on the right front still to fix for this 21 car. And they haven't even noticed the left rear where the bumpers really come unattached from the body right where you fill the far, a car fuel with fuel. So Andy Street just told the team coming down pit road, we have three minutes left on the clock to be able to get this car fixed up for the regular season champion. Obviously not going to handle nearly as well. They're just hoping to be able to get out, complete as many laps as they can today. One other note, Jeb Burton has come to the garage. We're going to Trying to get a word with Jeb here in just a moment, Rick. Yeah, unfortunate for the 27. Again, the left rear wheel came off. Jeb's still in the car, though, so they are working to get that car back out. So the issue for the 21, remember, he got blocked in behind this 20 right here. That was the big issue. This goes back to last week. You picked stalls off qualifying from last week. The 20 qualified third, the 21 qualified 26. So we could talk about bad luck and unfortunate, but you make a lot of your own luck. Bad qualifying gave Andy Street a late pit pick. He thought behind the 20 was going to be the best spot, assuming the 20 would probably be in and out. Uh, probably the leader of first or second all day yep. long here at Texas. But in the end, the 20 was running behind the 21. He comes in around the 21, blocks him in. Why does that matter? Third to 10th. Next thing you know, now you're in an accident. So, you know, a lot of, quote, racing luck is made by these teams, and just everything just gets magnified in the playoffs. Playoff drivers that have been involved in issues. There's already been five playoff drivers affected by accidents. Well, it started right away. The one 
gets out of the groove, very slippery straight off turn two, ends up retiring from the race, will finish last. This is you start, Sam. Then right here, two laps later, 10 car trying to get underneath, car in front of him, misjudged it, got in the grass, pulled a left front fender off. Justin Algar wins the stage, but the two car racing hard for the free pass, is able to do that to keep his hopes alive and get back on the lead lap. Chandler Smith, who had to start all the way in the back, doing a nice job working his way through the field. And as he did it, the seven goes on to sweep both stages. Bad luck for Jeb Burton. Left rear wheel comes off. Still damage on that car. Still in the garage working on it. And then the 19, Trevor Brand gets loose underneath. Josh Berry takes him out. Parker Kligerman is able to get through this. The 21 caught up as well. Austin Hill. See the damage they've been repairing this car for the past several laps. They eat as well as we've got a lot of repairs to the back of that car. Green flag back in the air as this time it's Cole Custer on the inside who has a great restart. Now Chandler Smith pushing that seven into turn one. Chandler Smith still able to stay on the outside. Double zero, Cole Custer. Big push down the back straightaway. Justin's going to stay in that second groove. He had an opportunity to get to the bottom of the racetrack, side by side for second. How about Chandler Smith? We just showed he had to start in the back of this field. It's been really smart. That 16 is insane. <laughs> Way up the racetrack there, and it's going to stick. It's just so hard for Custer, the car on the inside. Oh, we got another car. Parker is Park in the wall. Parker Retzloff. Another car just jumping out from underneath him in the exit of two there. So easy to do back in traffic. Parker was running in the 11th spot there. This other Parker here in the 48 uh, chasing after John Hunter Nemechek. And the 31's coming to pit road, make repairs to that car. What a great battle right here. And then at the back of this battle, look at that two car. Sheldon Creed, he got lapped at the end of stage one, and they have fought themselves back, and he is in eighth place trying to get by the nine car for seventh place. Never giving up. That team continued to work until they've got this car good enough that he's fighting for these top ten positions. Fifty one car trying to move down. Jeremy Clemens. Not giving much space there. Moffat on the inside of Creed now. Got another car in the wall on the back straightaway. I think it's a 45. Yeah, really slow. Looks like. Caution's out now. That was a really hard contact for Jeffrey Earnhardt. Turn two wall strikes again. Look at the damage. Big damage. You're done. Yeah, you're done. He's going to nurse that all the way back. Second incident today. Oh, that's a drive shaft. Wow. So that it hooks to the rear end and it goes up to the transmission. And for that thing to be ripped out of the car, Steve, that is a big impact. It moved the rear end over far enough to actually break that drive shaft. And that is a scary situation for a driver. That drive shaft spinning so many RPMs and it's right next to your right leg. Just up the racetrack, out of the groove. Wow. There's just no grip up, up there. They're, they've worked in a second groove. But if you get above that, it's really, really dirty, really slick, and easy to get yourself in trouble. We saw Jeffrey Earnhardt climb out of that car, and the AMR safety crew to him as well. Another restart coming up from Texas.
represent your favorite driver during the playoffs with amazing deals at the NASCAR shop. Check out the greatest selection of t-shirts, and hats, die casts, and much, much more. Visit nascar.com slash shop. Only 89 laps to go in the Andy's Frozen Custard 300, part of the NASCAR Xfinity Series playoffs. And Trevor Bain involved in an incident has been checked and released from the infield care center. And Kim's there with him. That's right, Rick. Early end to the day for Trevor. Walk us through what happened. Yeah, I uh, I was so loose in all day to turn three. Uh, if I back my corner up, if I could drive in deep, I could get it to be tight on the right front. And on that restart with Josh on my outside, I just had to lift a little early. And when I did, it unlocked the rear end, got loose. He gave me room, and, and I hate it for him because he did. He moved up a lane, still slid up, and couldn't catch it before I got his left rear. And once we made contact, we were both going around. So pretty unfortunate. Uh, you know, I love being at these races, love running up front. I don't know that we had anything for the seven early in that race, but we definitely had a top three, top five car. Track position so important, and that's what makes these restarts so wild. Everybody knows you've got to get those spots the first two laps or you're going to ride behind them for the next 20. So had to go for it. Just hate that it affected the eight, the 21, some of those other guys, uh, but thankful to be here. That's Trevor Bain, who is making his third and final scheduled start of the season, Marty. Jeb Burton still trying to get back out on the racetrack, Kim. Let's talk with team owner Jordan Anderson. What exactly happened to cause the left rear to come off? Yeah, I don't know if in some racing there, we had the left rear wheel came loose and just wild enough to where it killed all the wheel studs on the left rear, and you guys saw it all come off there. So I think I kind of jinxed us. We hadn't had a single mechanical failure all year. Our guys worked so hard to, to make the most out of what we got. And, Man, you just don't want it to happen here. The cars were falling in our place. We had good speed. Our guys are almost done. We're going to get him back out there. And, uh, you know, we'll see how the rest of the race goes. These guys are starting to get desperate. Hopefully we can uh, get this thing fixed and get him back on track and maybe get a few points and maybe stay in enough to go to Charlotte and, and kind of race for a spot there. But I, I hate it for Jeb and all our partners. We've we've worked so hard. This team just to be in the playoffs is, is pretty amazing. So um, we'll ju just take this one. We'll figure out how to learn to be better. But uh, just hate it when it happens, but uh, we'll try to be back better uh, next time. And Jordan's been racing a long time. He said, I've never seen something like that happen. And then the axle cap fall off as well. And to add insult to injury, just pulling into the garage area, a few stalls down the 31 car. The other Jordan Anderson racing car, not been a good few minutes for that race team. Yeah, I don't think he jinxed him, though, even though he did say you know, he hadn't had mechanical issues uh, prior to today. So the 10. Remember, got into the grass. Yeah, he got in the grass and tore the left front fender off the car, essentially, and they were really struggling with that. They've been working on it. He was running 13th when this caution came out. They chose to came to come down pit road and pit. He's now back into an 18th spot. But with all of the troubles that everybody else has had, all the other playoff drivers, there are still a ton of points that this 10 car can go get. He had, like I said, he had gotten to 13th, a lot of quality cars out of this race. He can turn this what looked like a terrible day into a good day if he can finish this race off. Choose taking place inside versus outside. And saw Allgaier and Custer. Allgaier's going to be on the outside for this restart. We're going to restart with 86 to go, which is outside the fuel window for all of these cars. So. We definitely need another pit stop. You would imagine it would be under yellow since we've had eight of those today. But what this race tends to do is have this rash of yellows. And then if we can get, you know, an eight or 10 lap green flag run and everybody settles in, then we see a long green flag run as we see the 27 of Jeb Burton repairs complete. He'll rejoin the, uh, the field. And he has about three or four cars out there on the racetrack to be able to gain spots on that are out of the race ahead of him. Trevor Bain, Jeffrey Earnhardt, his teammate Parker Ritzlaff. So and potentially more coming. Right. From what we've seen so far. You heard the tank. You heard we're riding along with Nemechek right there, and you saw him just throttle up really hard. He's doing that to get the rear tires clean on that car, so that when it launches on this restart, when he goes to the throttle, the rear tires work. That's all, the driver has so many things that he can influence on how the car restarts, and that's one of them. You're riding along, John Hunter, when he did it. Here we go again, as they have 86 laps to go. Allgaier surging ahead of Custer, and now he's going to get a little push there from Smith. I hear you, Chauvin, yeah. 
Oh, he gets him a little bit loose right there. The seven's out of the gas, losing lots of spots. Way up the racetrack, and all guys uh, saves it. So another issue for a playoff driver. The difference here, Allgaier has a win. He's already in the round of eight. Allgaier lost so many spots, and then he had his tires, had all of that debris on him from getting out of the groove, and it took a whole quarter to get the car to make grip while that debris got cleaned off the tires. And there's probably smoke flying out of the helmet also. I'm sure he's upset. <laughs> It's been a tough corner. I don't know what corner. the heck's going on. I just have no grip. Yeah, he just really lose right there. and The 16 couldn't wait to allow him to sort of gather the car. Sideways right there and finally chasing it way up the racetrack. It's interesting to see if they can rebound. It's got, you know, he's lost several positions outside of the top 15 now, so got a lot of work to do and just a few laps left in this race to do it. He still doesn't trust the race car either, but see the battle for the lead. John Hunter Nemechek been fast all year long, now putting a lot of pressure on the double zero of Custer. Parker Flickerman has moved into third place there in the 48 car. He's the one taking advantage of all of these problems that are happening to the playoff drivers. Parker has Got seven points through the stages today and a top five finish going into the Roval, a track where we think he'll have another top five run, a track where he thinks he has an advantage on most of the competition at the road course. It's looking great for this 48 car. He's got a little bit of debris on the front Watch of the car. Watch your We got some debris on the grill. That's excessive. That's going to be a problem. He's going to have to try to get behind the 16 car, see if he can get to the bumper of the 16 and be able to remove that. Marty. But what a run for Parker. He hasn't said anything about the temperature so far, but Patrick, uh, his crew chief, just said that a second ago, so they're gonna try and sneak in right there behind the 16 and maybe get that debris to go away. What a run for Parker, though, who told me this morning, my whole goal, there goes the debris, so we got now the spin. grill on the 48. Oh, a spin, Junior. Yeah, down in the middle of three and four, the 74 car. Cram is around, no contact. That tape, when we show Parker Klugerman's car, Steve had the left side of the grill taped up to, to try to get enough downforce and enough cooling, and that debris was on the right side. So it was worst case scenario for them. He had to get that off. I agree. I mean, it was a large piece of debris in exactly the wrong spot. Parker did a great job of kind of letting a car go, getting in line, letting that air pressure release, and the debris blew right off. You see it, it looks like a piece of the backing paper from uh, like a bear bond, right? So. Something blue from pit road. You see it, as you mentioned, Jeff, tape on the left, trash on the right, and as soon as he lets Sammy Smith go and he tucks in line behind him, boom, off it goes. Yeah, Junior and I walking down pit road before the race, and here's, here's the accident with the 74 of Dawson Cram. Not sure what started that, getting into turn three. Looked like he's underneath Sage Karam and just got loose underneath the 66 car. Does a good job of keeping the car out of the fence. Everybody does a good job not piling in there. When we see this car had its left side of it's taped up, I noticed while we were walking down pit road, there were many cars that had no tape whatsoever on the grill. And there were others that were taped up like Parker Klugman's car was taped up. And the second I saw that on Parker's car, I thought, you know, that is, that is a risk you take, right, Steve? Is you want as much tape as you can run, but because it makes downforce and it reduces drag, but too much tape and you get some debris on it, now you're overheating. But you can't give it up. You cannot give up the performance advantage of adding that tape. No, in the ambient temperature, we talk a lot about what it does to the drivers. What it also makes cooling the engine very inefficient because the air coming in the grill is so hot. So 80 to go is outside a fuel window, but we've only had 10 green flag laps, but 28 laps total. I just wonder if somebody thinks it's time to kind of get ahead on the fuel. There you go, the seven of Allgaier who just lost track position and the 10 of Hemrick. I think it's a great call for these two drivers. Stay ahead on tires and fuel in case we get a long run. Can and the 10 actually just made a recent stop to do four tires fuel and adjustment. So right now just topping off, trying to lengthen the amount they can spend on time and shorten their next stop with less fuel having to take on that next stop, Dave. 
And for Justin Allgaier, they'll go ahead and change Goodyear tires because he says in addition to uh, getting jacked up on the restart by the 16, I just feel like a tire may have equalized on me or something. So they'll get four fresh ones here, send it back out and see how far he can claw forward. They can't do what they did last week at Bristol. There was so much tire fall off that the cars on old tires were eaten up by Allgaier, but he does believe that this will help him in the long run this afternoon. So equalize, these cars run inner liners. The inner liner should have about 15 pounds more pressure than the tire itself. If you're running 40 in the tire, you want 55 or so in the inner liner. And if the seal becomes loose, they start running the same pressure. Well, now instead of having an inner tube, you just have a big chunk of debris in your tire. And that will make one shake. It'll make it lose grip. So that's what they mean by an equalized tire. Hot. We've heard that out of numerous drivers and Pretty much everybody around this racetrack. Well, it is the hottest Xfinity Series race at Texas. 99 degrees today, shattering that record we saw last year of 94. And what better way to talk about the heat than put a couple guys out there on the Peacock Pit Box? <laughs> KP and Brad. Thank Am you. I right? Is it hot? Thank you, Rick. Man, I've been on the radio all day crying for relief. I need somebody <laughs> up in here to take my place Man. like Josh Wynn. It is hot, yeah. but the surprising or not surprising thing, as hot as it is, the racetrack's ice. Yeah, I know. There seems like there's no grip anywhere on this racetrack. I mean, it's really been surprising. We've seen all of our playoff drivers, five or six of the, of the 12, have a difficult day today, make mistakes, get in trouble. It's just greasy, and you got to pay attention. And you heard, you hear Jeff Burton talk about it all the time. You know, the opposite ends, you have to just pay attention to how you get into the corner, take your time, and just be focused every lap. You let down just a little bit, and you bust your rear end. Yeah, as hot as it is, it's like we talked. It's like we talked in pre-race. The heat was physical heat, yeah. but it's a mental heat too. These guys have to stay focused, and we see them miss their line by two or three feet, and they're out of it. Yeah, that's exactly right. You just make that little mental mistake, and all of a sudden you're in trouble, just like we saw with Justin Allgaier, yes. who's led all day long. And so, Rick, it's hot down here. As you can tell, my hair's <laughs> blowing in the wind. It's hot. But it's, it's warm. hot. Yeah, both of you guys' hair it really looks messy with all this wind. So tomorrow. Let's just re-rack. Countdown to green starts at 3 o'clock. And it's race number one of the round of 12 for the Cup Series. That gets underway at 3.30. NASCAR post-race will be at 7 o'clock. Just after the checkered flag flies, as well as on Peacock streaming there. With 78 to go, getting ready for another choose. As the cars are coming to the arrow now, we'll see. We saw what happened last time to Allgaier. Parker he Klingerman, checks up there now. Yeah, Parker Klingerman gave up a rope. He could have jumped to the outside, but he's decided to stay on the inside. Actually gave up a road to restart on the inside. Let's see how that works out for him. Custer will be on the outside, Nemechek on the inside for this restart. A couple awesome. Smiths right there in row two. With all the issues of playoff drivers, a couple of drivers doing a good job so far today. We talked about Chandler Smith a little bit, but also Sammy Smith in that 18 car, currently sitting, they finished the race now, 20 points to the cut line. So he's done a jo good job in that 18 car. And that's what Jeff Mendery and his crew chief wants. Hey, let's just, if we can run fifth, run fifth. If we run eighth, run eighth. Run 18th, run 18th. Do not wreck this race car because that's been their trouble. They've had good speed, but they've been in a lot of wrecks. And Jeff's just wanting to calm him down, get him in a position where he understands that running eighth's not a failure. That you maximize your day, get all you can. That's what young drivers struggle with. You, it's hard to come to grips with not winning. You gotta win, you gotta win. But in, in championship racing, you have to earn points. You cannot give them up. Getting ready for the restart. Nemechek on the inside, Custer on the outside, a little bit of slip there out of Cole Custer. Opens the door for the 20 of John Hunter Nemechek. John Hunter now has control of this race and that's not what you want. If you're a competitor, that car has been so fast all year long, now he's got preferred air. It will be a hard pass getting back by him. Chandler Smith clears Sammy Smith.
Parker Kligerman still running. Just right outside the top five running in that sixth spot behind Brandon Jones. There's Allgaier. We'll see what he's able to do. Yeah, he's trying to work his way back. They came to pit road during that caution. So he's trying to get some of this track position back. Creed gives him a break right there, getting down into turn three. Dave, what you got on the seven car? Just check with the team guys, and they told me that none of the four tires were equalized. And I don't know, Junior, sometimes if you get shoved out of the uh, groove like that, like Justin did, it just takes a while for everything to come back. But everything was fine in the four tires. Yeah, I would tell him the reason why the car didn't have any grips, because rear tires were probably off the ground. The 16 car shoving him down in the corner there. And, and just get back to work. And he's got that behind him and right now trying to work his way back through this field. But it'll be hard. The closer you get to the front, the harder these cars are going to be able to pass. It's going to need to do a lot of work here. The one thing they've done a nice job on is not only adjusting this car now for traffic as you see him makes the passes, but, you know, currently running 10th, last on pit road a lap 121, where all the leaders were last on pit road a lap 93. And they've had about 20 laps of yellow on that, but he still can run a solid 20 or 22 laps farther than the leaders. We expect the leaders with about 35 to go, where he could probably run all the way down to 15 to go. Maybe gas only, maybe two tires. Just a lot of opportunities in front for the seven. And it's way easier if you pass cars, as we see the eight, who was involved in an accident, slow on the apron. You see all the tape on the back of this car. It's like he's in. Not sure exactly what the problem is. I might have the left rear tire flat, but our guy right here trying to work past Kaz Grala, who's having a great run today. How about that respectful move? He saw the seven coming. He gave him the whole top, entering the corner. Didn't put up a fight at all. And I am wrenching loose. <laughs> and really fast. All guy are up to eighth now. I don't think you would tell a driver, you know, he's, he's racing. Oh, no, we got a lot of smoke oh. inside the 27. You have to ask yourself if this wasn't an issue from the left rear earlier. When that axle came out, did it hurt the engine? Did it let enough oil out of the rear gear down the axle tube where it burned up the rear gear? I mean, it seems very coincidental that they had that issue on the left rear earlier, and now a second mechanical issue. I don't know if the car... Track bar is broke, track bar. Track bar is broke on the back of the car. You see the rear end able to move around freely left to right. Well, that's very odd, because you wouldn't think that a loose wheel and a track bar would be connected, but... Either way, a uh, bad day gets worse for Jeff Burton, who is already all the way back outside the top 30. Marty, what about John Hunter Nemechek? Yeah, Rick, time for a Toyota driver update with John Hunter Nemechek, who is leading just his seventh lap of the day, but took the lead at the right time, trying to win back-to-back mile-and-a-half races for the 20 team. He said when they're out front, the handling so much different and better than it was when they were back in traffic earlier. And, Jeff, I think they were surprised when Cole Custer took the outside on that last restart. John Hunter wanted the inside, but they were going to go the opposite of whatever Cole Custer did. He went outside. John Hunter went inside and was able to take control of this race. It yeah, worked for him, Marty. Take, take the shots when you get them. Eight laps out front for John Hunter Nemechek, leading at Texas.
John Hunter Nemechek is about a second and a half in front of these two. Cole Custer running in the second spot. Chandler Smith is third, and Sammy Smith is running in that fourth position. Then it's Allgaier who has really made a rebound after coming to Pitt Road on the most recent caution. He is up to fifth already. And then Brandon Jones, the first non-playoff driver uh, up here inside of the top ten. Brandon Jones running in the sixth spot. Chandler Smith looking to the inside. Doesn't get the advantage on Custer. Custer up to racetrack a little bit. I still think they're battling a tight condition at double zero. Just hasn't really handled the best all day long, but he's worked hard to keep his track position, and he's not made the mistakes that the other competitors have. Here he sits in second place. Doesn't have the speed that Nemechek has. Didn't have the speed to race Algar, but he's going to drive a smart race. It'll be a hard pass for Chandler Smith, I believe. This is a really important race for Chandler Smith, in my opinion. He's He has not done well on the road courses, and he needs to go to the Roval with some points where he doesn't feel like he's got a push. And we saw the 27 of Jeb Burton go back behind the wall. Marty, I believe you've caught up with the driver. Yeah, Rick, what a strange sequence of events for Jeb Burton and the 27 team today. So first of all, what happened when the left rear came off and how did the track bar wind up breaking and taking you out? Uh, just careless mistake to be honest uh, Shane did a great job making the car better I think we got up to the top seven there uh, coming to the end of stage two and uh, pit crew left the left for a tire loose had a re ba really bad vibration and then uh, the tire finally came off I was limping it around and then I guess it just probably damaged the track bar pretty bad after that I just hate it we'd be running inside the top eight no problem right now Shane did a great job making adjustments um, just hate it man just I feel like Shane and I are executing and Brian are executing and, and um, me and Shane can't do it all, right? We're, we're doing a really good job and just um, just people made mistakes. So. It's going to be a tough scenario for Jeff Burton. He will go to the Roval next week in a must-win situation. There's Brandon Jones. I was mentioning earlier uh, the fact that he's the highest running non playoff driver right now in that sixth spot. Yeah, just all year long looking for that win to get him into the playoffs. Came close at Kansas the last race of the regular season, ran second. Uh, really found more pace in that nine than we had seen. And then here he is once again in the playoffs. Not a playoff driver, but running sixth, having a nice day in the nine car. Yeah, somebody else is having a nice day, Brett Moffitt. Brett's a good race car driver. We've seen him had success. And he, he does a really nice job and some news this week from AM Racing. Talking about having a second car next year in the Xfinity Series. That'd be great to see if they can make that happen. This is a team that's building to try to take the fight to some of the bigger teams. They do a really nice job looking to, looking to build on that. Right behind him, Ryan Sieg in the ninth place coming off his best finish of the year, a sixth at Bristol. He's got a top 10 here last year in this race. These are the kind of you know, these are the kind of races where the 39 team can shine. They got the speed to go out there and run in the top 10 at the mile and a half. And then when everyone seems to have all these types of troubles, it's an opportunity for them to really excel, get that sixth, that fifth, that fourth place finish that will come at times for this team during the season. They got a lot of race cars out on the racetrack. They filled three or four or five cars a race. They're very busy, family run operation. Good to see them running strong today. And there are four drivers that are non-playoff drivers inside the top ten. And the fourth one is Jeremy Clements. And surprisingly, no driver has more starts here than Clements. Uh, so much time on track for Jeremy. Again, their family-owned team. He, had started, or he actually started racing when he was eight years old, racing go-karts. Uh, but grandfather engine builder just so much about uh, that team and the grit and hard work that those those team members do to get him on the racetrack yeah first Pacific funding on the side of this car that's a partner that Jeremy has seen for the last few years it's a good look at paint scheme a little Texas pride on the hood we 
keep bitching. Sammy Smith in that 18 car doing such a great job today. He's kind of closed in on the battle for, for second between Cole Custer and Chandler Smith. That 18 car. There was the leader, John Hunter Nemechek, and you see how big of a lead he has over the double zero of Custer. There's Custer, but now look here, the 18 car right on the back bumper of Chandler Smith. They drove away from Justin Allgaier. So this 18 car, can, can he gain these spots, Jeff Burton, but also be patient, mindful, not to make those mistakes that he's been making this year. Get in this situation and you get racy, uh, you, you obviously want to try to get the track position, but you got to look at the big picture as well. Man, you're not giving your guy in the seven enough credit. I think he is coming. He is coming, but he had a big moment a couple laps ago. Lost a bunch of time to this 18 car. Yeah, that. what was he saying? Loose earlier? Yeah. That looked like the moment that you were talking about, Junior? Yeah, this is it right here, way up the racetrack. And that's everyone else has crashed when they went up there. So he did a good job just backing out not trying to race the rest of the corner, just get to the back straight away without hitting anything. Let's listen to the 7 radio. Mistake, okay? Don't worry about that mistake. I need you to focus and not make any more. I got you on the cycle here, bud. I'm going to take care of you. We're going to win this thing. I copy that. All right, just give me some radio silence here. Let me go to work. So what I like there was a couple things. First, Jim Holman was, was encouraging him that the mistake was okay, but being factual, I can't have you make another. I got you on the cycle. I'm not showing everyone my poker hand, but I got a plan that's gonna gain you some time. Taking the pressure off the driver of the seven, saying you don't have to get all these on the racetrack. And then I loved all guys and said, well, good. Then give me some silence and let me get to work, Dave. Well, Steve, we're coming into that pit cycle window now. Obviously, guys could make it to the end from here, but most uh, drivers that pit on lap 93 can probably only get to lap 165 or so. So we're in that window, and for Justin Allgaier, definitely confirming loose and confirming he does have one more set of fresh Goodyear tires. So that uh, bobble that they had on track didn't cost him in terms of tires. He's as good as everyone else to put a fresh set on. And while they can make it to the end from here, we have run so many yellows that I expect the leaders to run a solid 10 or 11 more laps before we see the green flag cycle start. The seven of Allgaier, he can run further if he chooses, although look at the traffic in front of him. Current green flag run, 27 laps as John Hunter Nemechek still out front.
What should be the final stops of the day happening here at Texas Motor Speedway. 44 laps to go. John Hunter Nemechek pits from the lead to the car was too tight the longer they ran. And the reason they came to pit road, Dave, is because Cole Custer came the lap before. Yep, the cycle has been done. Chandler Smith on pit road as well. Four tires for him and a splash of Goodyear of uh, Snoko fuel to get to the end of the race. Pretty efficient pit work. Seems from up and down pit road so far. Kim? And for Sammy Smith, he was reporting tight center exit. They told him our entry is getting a little too shallow, and that's probably hurting our exit. Four fresh Goodyear tires, Snoko fuel. They did free him up with the air pressure, Marty. Parker Kligerman was coming off his career best mile and a half performance at Kansas, where he finished fourth. He has been top five today as well. So the car's just too tight the longer they run, but impressive speed out of this 48 team. Well, we heard the radio from Jim Pullman to the driver of the 7 of I have you on the cycle. And what does he mean by that? Well, the 7 of Augar continues on the racetrack, 42 laps to go. Augar running 31 twos to 31 O's when he's not in traffic. We'll update what the leaders do with fresh tires. But this is a very precarious situation for everybody that has pitted because you see on the left-hand side that Allgaier has a bunch of cars one lap down. So if a yellow does come out, this is going to be a huge break for Allgaier. Now, I like the call. Double zero came. The 20 says, oh, I can't get beat by the guys coming early, so he has to cover that pit call. But drivers like the 7 of Allgaier, the 21 of Hill, the 10 of Hemrick, they had come to pit road, and there it is. There's the yellow. Great pit work. And great uh, opportunity talking, for the seven. Unfortunately, not so great for the 44, who was the caution. Die making his Daniel Die making his first Xfinity Series star, running decent too inside the top 20 before the cycle. Yeah, the other person, the other team that really helped. We've talked about him all day long, Daniel Hemrick. We're gonna be in a catbird seat here. He played the same strategy as Algar did, pitted the same lap as he did, and now he stayed on the lead lap here as well, as well as Austin Hill. Just a huge break for Austin Hill. Think about that damage he's out there nursing around. The same with Hemrick. Can you believe it, Jeff? Like, I thought both of these cars were done, and here they are still having a chance to score points. Yeah, you got to keep fighting, right? You never know what's going to happen. Look, that I, the other thing that was happening there, when Nemechek came out, he ran a second faster than what Algar was running on old tires. So new tires do matter. But this put them, now the caution came out just at the right time, I think, for them, Steve. We'll see how that works out. But there was real speed in new tires. Oh, yeah. No, I think all guy and those guys are going to be great because seven cars in the lead lap, so they'll all service their car without an issue. Nemechek will get the free pass, so he'll start at the tail end. There was no free pass, actually. Oh, Daniel me. Dye Daniel would have was in the position. Yeah. So that means Nemechek, Custer, those guys will take the wave around. Um, what that means is they'll be on the lead lap, but they're going to be all the way back behind lap down cars and everybody. That'll give all guys some breathing room. Poor Daniel Dye. Isn't that always the case? Yeah. Let's see what happened at 44. Way up the racetrack here in the middle of one and two. And the grooves moved up there, but he's quite a ways higher out of the groove. Does a good job, though. Car spins around. Doesn't do any damage to the car. Not many people have been able to spin over there today and, and say that, so. It kept getting easier and easier the higher I went. Just like a lot more feeling at the steering wheel. The steering wheel was way more stiff the higher I'd go, and I'd have more ability to cut down and have a better run down the back stretch. Daniel, a truck regular. Yeah, the 19-year-old out of Florida making his first Xfinity Series start. and I mean, I know he spun out there, but look at the car. It's clean, no dents. To your point, Junior, right? He kept it out of the wall, so he'll have a chance to run all the laps today. That has to be the number one goal of anyone making their first start. See the points as they run with 38 laps still to go here at Texas. So and now pit road will be open. Allgaier, Hill, Hemrick, Yaley, Sieg. We, we keep talking about Allgaier and Hill and Hemrick because they're playoff cars, but let's talk about J.J. Yaley, the only driver this weekend doing double duty. He's running fourth. Kyle Sieg running fifth. Ryan Ellis running sixth. And Anthony Alfredo. We see the Andes is the big sponsor. Well, Anthony Alfredo in that 78 car running seventh on the lead lap. So they'll be able to service their car and restart inside the top ten. You see the big gap behind the seven. They can take deep breath. No penalties here. Don't speed on pit road. you got a lot of time. No pressure at all. 30 out back. <laughs> there you go. 30 out back. Dave. 
And that's like the third time Jim Pullman has reminded the pit crew, you do not need to rush here. So just a good clean stop. That's what they need. Remember, his car was loose and losing rear lateral grip, Kim. And how about the fight in the team of Daniel Hemrick rebounding after getting the grass early. Daniel said super tight exit of two. They will put tape on the grill, air pressure adjustment on that Chevrolet, Marty. Speaking of fight, how many times have we seen this from Austin Hill and Andy Street and the entire 21 team to rally back? Remember the contact earlier? The car does not look pretty. Now Austin uh, having some issues here on this pop, trying to make sure that the left rear lug nuts are tight. But they discussed on the radio, we have a legit shot for a top 10 today, which is unbelievable with a race car that looks like that, Rick. Yeah, getting caught up in that accident with the 8 and the 19, uh, just getting collected, but they have battled back, and as you mentioned, could get a top 10 finish. Again, 38 laps still to go here at Texas. Now under 37 to go. The NASCAR Xfinity Series playoffs. It's the Andy's Frozen Custard 300 from Texas Motor Speedway. Shadows starting to creep over the front stretch. You mentioned Anthony Alfredo uh, has a career best finish here. So we talked about the cars like Anthony Alfredo that stayed out and caught the yellow. So as we see the cars come to the choose, let's talk about position. We see Allgaier lead lap. Behind him, Hemrick, Sieg, Alfredo, Ellis, Hill, Yaley. But now what you're going to see is a bunch of cars that are laps down. So they're choosing uh, like Daniel Dye, like Stefan Parsons, who's now behind the wheel of the 92. So what makes this more confusing is there's that bright yellow car, Brandon Jones, the orange car, Parker Kligerman. They're 12th and 13th in the running order, but they are not 12th and 13th on the racetrack. Yeah. But because they took the wave around, this is how it lines up. Lead lap cars, lap down cars that pitted appropriately, then wave around cars. So it's kind of like group one, group two, group three. For that reason, um, you know, it's not just, hey, Parker, great job, you're on the 13th. He is going to be in chaos back there, Jeff, trying to work his way through these lap down cars. Well, the chaos, yes, but the, the pace difference between the cars is huge. So you got cars that were in the front leading laps, and now you got cars that couldn't stay in the lead lap between them and the and Algar and Hemrick. And with Hemrick on the bottom, he's wrecked as well. So the, the closing rate is going to be massive. These guys trying to work themselves through, you got to be aggressive, but they also got to be smart, Marty. And Jeff, here's the other interesting thing. John Hunter Nemechek has not raced around these cars all day long. So he quickly asked the spotter, Tony Hirschman, who's around me? What has her day been like? That important information, getting to John Hunter right now to get a book on the other drivers around him. 35 to go from Texas. And this is the second race of the playoffs. And once again, Allgaier up front. Already he's led 106 laps. And with that, you see the 20 and the double zero trying to make time right away. That black hood, yellow riding 20, hard to see in the sunshine. Three wide through the middle. Clear, take it, take it, take it, take it. 
They're trying to take everything they can on this restart. John Hunter Nemechek on the high side there. Chandler Smith way up the racetrack off turn four. No contact with the wall, lost a lot of spots in that 16 car. You see the rest of the field trying to work their way through this traffic. John Hunter Nemechek, Cole Custer, and Parker Kligerman nose to tail as they try to go by some of this lap traffic. They've done a nice job of picking off several of those lap cars without getting an incident. That's really the goal right here. See him getting by Ellis, who's running in six, by the way. Battle of third, Austin Hill underneath Kyle Sieg. And if you Kyle Sieg, this is a situation you haven't been in before, and this is where it's really important for Steve Barkdahl, your spotter, to be talking to you. Hey, man, just hit your marks. Race your race. You drive the racetrack. Don't worry about what's coming behind you. Focus on you. Don't get intimidated by all these people. Because they're coming. As we see Cole Custer in that double zero. Parker Kligerman right behind him. They both went by Anthony Alfredo there. John Hunter Nemechek now trying to take that fourth spot away from Kyle Sieg. Nemechek making up ground. 2.8 seconds back now. Parker Kligerman running in the seventh position, Marty. Impressive speed for Parker Kligerman trying to get another spot from Cole Custer. Remember, he came in 22 below the cut line after the mechanical issue in the first race of this round at Bristol. Parker told me this morning, if we can cut half of that out going to the Roval, we feel really good about our chances. We'll look on the left-hand side of your screen. They've done better than that. Right now, minus eight below the cut line. And Junior, I think going to the Roval, where Parker is so good at the road courses, I think they feel pretty good about what they'll have in two weeks. Absolutely. Absolutely. This is exactly what the 48 team needs to do. They've avoided any massive mistakes that would take them out of this race today. Very few playoff drivers have been able to avoid mistakes today. I think you can get a few more spots before this race is over with. Make that job even easier going into the Roval. John Hunter Nemechek, Nemechek on the inside of the 21 of Austin Hill right here. Austin's going to race him hard. Looks like the right front of that 21 kicked over a little bit, a little more extra right front camber, but car handling great, driving good. Going to give up this spot to John Hunter Nemechek, but incredible resilience from Austin Hill and his team. And Dale, don't you think that's going to, I mean, if it can finish somewhat how they're running, Hemrick and Hill have to think about how fortunate they were to dodge a big deficit in the points, both running inside the top five uh, with 29 laps to go and very damaged race cars. Yeah, 100%, especially the 10 of, of Hemrick. I thought that splitter damage was going to really make his day difficult. But they did do some good repairs. And they have him here with an opportunity to finish well inside the top 10. The glass got half full because they told him earlier just couldn't <laughs> yeah. fix it. Impossible. Yeah. And he needs the he needs this result because they weren't able to do anything in the first couple of stages to gain points for the 10. So and not only good repairs, but great strategy, great timing of when they made repairs and used the cautions to their advantage. You can see his car is not capable of. You know, he doesn't have, he's in a run in fourth. He does not have a fourth place car, but great strategy, never quit attitudes, got him in this position. Well, if it's positive for the 10 and the 21, Sheldon Creed outside the top 10 has just got to be crushed with the day that they're having, right? He's currently plus nine, but I mean, look at the two car. There's no damage. It has just been bad. There's no other way to put it. They've said it on the radio. They don't know what is wrong with this two car, but it is a very bad day and a very bad time of year to just totally miss the setup or have an issue. Something amiss for the two car all day. Yeah, Sheldon Creek started 24th uh, after qualifying, so it has been it's been a difficult day for Sheldon. Yeah, no stage points, much like what Dale pointed out, what the 10 was against because of the accident. Well, the two just was never good enough. And I mean, you, you this is what keeps a crew chief up at night, right? Is having a car that you just flat miss the setup on or something is not installed correctly. Maybe there's a slug upside down, maybe a caster or camber slug 
the setting's the wrong way. You know, it's hard to believe that a team that has been so consistent. Now, I know they've had their issues with finishing some races, but their speed on the two has been relatively consistent all year long to be just this far off. This is one, guys, Jeff and Junior. When this one comes back to the shop, if it's still in one piece, we're going to spend a day post-racing this car to find out were we just this far off with our decisions or did we have a mistake to make sure we don't make it again. Yeah, and if you put this car back in the trailer as a primary, don't tell me. Oh, you Just <laughs> lie to me. Yeah. Oh, yeah, after we post race it, I'd cut both fenders off so they couldn't make me take it again. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, nope, that one's done. I don't care if we do find something wrong. Brandon Jones closing in on Creed now. Now that Nibicek is clear in the second place, just watching the lap times on this number 20. Two and a half seconds behind Algar, the leader, but he's quicker. Every lap, he's about a tenth quicker. That lap, two tenths faster than Algar in the seventh. So this 20. Moving around this racetrack, too. Look at this line he's running in turn one and two, down in turn three and four. Moving around, finding speed. There's the lap times on the column on the left, Marty. Yeah, and they've done that the last two runs. John Hunter's been really moving around the racetrack, and you ride on board with John Hunter with the Toyota onboard camera right now. Ben Mayshore said something interesting, Steve. At the, right before they went back green, he said, the length of this run is going to be perfect for us. John Hunter has struggled on the longer runs today, about 35 laps at the end of this run here, at the end of this race. So have, does it come down to that, Steve? Sometimes a Yellow short down. run or a medium Debris. run really works for you. Caution out right now, though. As we see, it looks like a piece of crush panel is blown out of a car, a big piece of aluminum on the back stretch. Yes, Marty, absolutely. Now, you think about that more in this series. The Cup Series, you think about it at short tracks. But see, what's different is, you know, with the tire limit in the Xfinity Series, you just don't come and put tires on all the time. So short run versus long run can make a big difference for your car. The Cup Series, normally you have to be good on the short run because you've got to put tires on under these yellows. But think about this. I'm going to circle real quick. Look at that temperature. I mean, look at the time of day, right? These guys have been in this car now for, what, well over two hours yep. as we close in on, on just past 520 on the East Coast. Do I have that right? Yeah, 520 on the East Coast. Oh, sorry, 620 on the East Coast, yep. 520 local. So these guys have been in the car for, you know, over two hours, 130 degree heat. It's going to be a real interesting situation to see who could kind of cool down, take a breath and focus when it matters. And this is not a caution. We've been talking about Hemrick catching that break. This is not a caution he wanted to see because all those cars behind him now are able to catch back up. They've got some timely cautions, and this one is not the one they want. Come on, let's get so now, do you get tires, do you not? You heard, come on, from the double zero. But I'm not sure everyone on pit road has the same amount of tires. That might drive some of the decision. Let's see what happens. All guys stays out. Nemechek brings a big chunk, if not all, to pit road. I believe all guy was out of tires, so that kind of forced the hand on the seven. Kim. Daniel Hemrick will come in, and when I checked, it looked like they were actually putting scuffs on the wall. They did change air pressure adjustment to give him more rear stability and a little bit more turn. So Daniel Hemrick getting service right now, Marty. Boy, this could be a game changer for the 20 team. John Hunter Neiman check slides a little bit long in his pit stall, but Ben Bayshore made that point, Steve. He said, hey, the seven does not have another set of tires. Dave, that could have been why the seven didn't come down pit road and why the 20 did. Yeah, that's wonderful for sure. They only had scuffs for that. You see Cole Custer, top of the screen there, getting his fresh Goodyear tires. He was tight in the middle of the corner, made an adjustment for that. Sorry about that, Dave. I didn't mean to jump on you, but to Marty's point, remember the seven kind of got sent out of the groove early and thought he might have had an equalized tire, as Dave reported. That's where they used that extra set of tires. So I think Marty's dead on about, you know, you have to use what tires you have. So now we'll see if new tires, because Jeff, you mentioned that you thought new tires had a big advantage during that green flag cycle. Yeah, they really were. It was a really big advantage at that point. We'll see right here. This is really close. This, this 20 car came in hot, and I'm not so sure he was in his pit box. If he was, it was very, very close. Yeah, the nose of that 20 looked like it was very close to the line, and you can't have anything on or over that line. And NASCAR's got an incredible system to be able to do that an automated system uses cameras so look out look at see how close this is so the nascar owns the line oh i see a good solid quarter or half inch between the uh <laughs> so the line is the white line right so the black underneath it they put down to kind of differentiate between the lighter concrete and the white line that gives it a real clear 
defining point, and then you see a little contact right here between the 51 and the 18 leaving. They were lucky that wasn't worse. Sammy Smith. Watch, let's watch this 20 pit stop again. Watch the right front tire changer. It's his job to determine if that car is in a pit box or not. Watch him. See right there, takes a look, says, yep, we're in, and he starts the pit stop. Had he started to change, it would have been a penalty, Steve, but instead he had the wherewithal to say, hey, I know this is long, let's check it and make sure that he was in the box. Great job by the right front tire changer. Kyle Power, good job to you. Party. And I was standing right there, Rick. I can confirm the 20 was good. Ben Bayshore kind of held up his uh, fingers, almost like he's an NFL official saying, by that much, they barely got it in. And the other key point is that it's an Xfinity Series right race. So Ben Bayshore, the crew chief, was actually down on pit road catching the front tires when they came back to the wall. So he would have said, hey, back it up if he did not see that it was a clean stop going on. Sprint to the finish here. Talk about all the small things in a race that make a difference, and that is training and understanding and, and then implementing the practice. Great job. And Hemrick on his way to you, Kim. Yeah, and we talked about the good rebound. Well, they lost all that track position coming back down to pit road a second time because Daniel came on the radio and said, my left front just feels ill. There's something wrong, almost like a loose wheel. They checked it. The spotter checked it while he was on the racetrack. They didn't see a problem. The crew felt like they got on tight. They left it up to Daniel, and Daniel chose to come down pit road. He said it just does, just does not feel right. So you see him on pit road with that left front tire issue. Well, and you see him jump across with a saw. Remember, he hit the grass earlier, did all the damage. They've tried to repair it the best they can. They can't add a new fender. So obviously something had moved where maybe it could hit the tire. You saw the crew member cut it away. Great decision by Hemrick. I know he had that track position, but you have to finish now. You've had such a great day. He has a good car. Even damage, I think he could drive probably inside the top 15. Experience, if you don't feel it's correct, come down pit road, make a change. We heard. Riley Herbst say on the pace laps, he thought he had a tire issue, ended up having an issue on the first lap of the race. He wishes he could go back and redo yep. that decision. Daniel Hemrick showing a little bit of experience, saying, I'm going to raise my hand as much as I don't want to and pit a second time. He scored as the last car on the lead lap uh, in the 18th position. So only 18 cars on the lead lap as we get ready for the restart. 17 laps to go here in Texas. Allgaier and Hill. Back into the gas. Anthony Alfredo running in that third spot. Giving the seven a push. Parker Klingerman on the inside of the two down into turn one makes it work. Yeah, the two is on only right side tires and it didn't seem to work on the restart as the 20 and the double zero get clear very quickly. Right now you're wondering, everybody's wondering how foul. Oh, we got, we got a spin. That's awesome. Is that Hill? No, no, no. That's the 26. Kaz Grala gets caught up in this. Yeah, the right rear uh, tire is completely off of that 26. Yeah, JJ Yaley started up there, I believe, in the Fired second up, row. Buddy, come on. And just struggling to really get going. It's getting passed by a lot of cars down the back straightaway. And turns the car around in turn three, and Kaz Grala had nowhere to go trying to avoid contact. Yaley was running fifth, Kaz Grala 11th as we take another look. So JJ's on the outside line down there, and it's like just trying to go three wide, not enough room. JJ did not provide him enough room to be in there three wide, and Kaz Grala couldn't back out in time. You could see him trying to get out of that situation right there. Caution comes out again. 12 cautions already here at Texas with 16 laps still to go. This time it's J.J. Yaley and Taz Grala involved in the incident. Andy's frozen custard 300.
coming up on the final laps here at Texas Motor Speedway. And already it has been the most cautions in a race for this season. 12. The record for the track is 13. I think you got us, Rick, because you said earlier today that this was going to be a short race. 45 laps segment one and two. It might just, you know, speed by. <laughs> Well, let's bring in the Peacock Pit Box and KP and Brad. I don't think I jinxed it, but uh, we've seen a lot of <laughs> cautions here, guys. Okay, Nostradamus, what are you, what are you thinking? Or do no. you think we have jinxed it? Oh, no doubt about it. We're going over that. We're breaking that record today. <laughs> that is going to happen. You know, it's just interesting. You get these restarts, and guys get a little spread out, yeah. and you start racing hard, and you just make a, a small mistake. J.J. Yaley was running great, having yes. a good day. Uh, Cass Grala just stepped out a little bit, and you just you get it. You can't get off of a guy. So I think we got more cautions coming. I'm surprised at the number of cautions today. I thought we would see some on restarts, but it just seems like there's nowhere to hide on this racetrack. Yeah, we, as we sit here and watch the point total, yeah. how, how much you're out, how much you're in, it's amazing. Caution to caution. A, a guy will line up in a different place and lose 10 or 15 points. So it is fantastic to watch this. It's going to be interesting to watch because I'm with you. I think we got at least two more in us. We got two more coming. We got two more. And, and what about Justin Allgaier? You know, yeah. is he, what is going to happen without, you know, he doesn't have the tires. He's got a fast race car. Uh, can those guys run him down? So, Rick, there's a lot going on. I think you've jinxed us. We're going overtime today. <laughs> We're going to be here for a while and more cautions to come. There are a lot of cautions, but I'll throw a number at you. 17. You know what we think about 17? Only 17 cars haven't been involved in an incident today. 21 cars have been involved in accidents already here at Texas. And the guy up front and the guy calling the shots standing by with Dave. That is Jim Pullman and this morning Jim you and I talked about how amazing Justin has been in qualifying with the third mile and a half pole here. Uh, how amazing can he be now on the older tires. Well it's going to be fun to watch that's for sure. Um, yeah, it's tough. I mean, we got caught uh, off cycle there, pinned them, and then, uh, you know, the only thing we had left was some 11 lap tires. Um, but man, this Reese's Chevrolet has been off the hook all day and really proud of all these guys and Justin. Um, I feel like the lap times are pretty good. You get some cooled down and, and the fall off is not that bad. Uh, that lap or two on their sticker tires burns a little bit off. So who knows? We'll see what happens. Maybe things have equaled out just a little bit, Marty. Dave, let's have that uh, debate with Ben Bashore, the crew chief for John Hunter Nemechek. So does this caution uh, hurt you with the cycle on tires or help you by bunching the field up? I, I think it's a help. I think it bunches us up and gives us a shot at the seven. Uh, without it, I think the seven was going to get probably build a two or three second gap. So th this puts us in the ball game. Uh, I don't think we're going to beat him heads up. So hopefully with the 12, 13 lap newer tires, we'll, we'll be able to go get him. You guys want to choose the bottom here or the top here? I think we'll. Uh, for us, going opposite of the 21. So if we can get the front row, we'll take it. If, if not, we'll uh, we'll push the seven and try to get clear and, and dogfight him for the win. There you go. And that's what they were just talking about on the radio a moment ago, Steve. As damaged as the 21 is right now, even though he's been pretty quick, they want to go the opposite direction of wherever he chooses when they do make the choose. Well, I'm concerned that the 21 doesn't have a very good right front fender to turn, but I'm also a little concerned about the rear bumper that I'd have to push. I don't want to hook the 21 or have an issue, so I agree. Opposite of the 21 would be the move. Um, the 10 back on pit road. Still working on that left front there. Still on the lead lap, so no issues here. Well, restarts have been wild today, and we saw earlier Justin Algar was kind of dominating the race and drives down into turn one. It just doesn't really have the pace right here. It gets checked up a little bit. And the 16 gets into the back of him. He gets him up the racetrack, and now he's got all that debris on his tires. And look at all the spots he's losing. But after that restart, he never liked his car again. Even after he got his tires cleaned, he never liked his, his car. So it makes me wonder. Now that he's restarting in the front, this is his second, third cycle on these tires. How is his car going to drive? How confident is his is he in his car because of that incident earlier in the day? He's absolutely vulnerable in this situation. He's probably going to take, let's see, he's going to take top of the racetrack. So the 20 probably knows, hey, I need to be in his back bumper. I'm going to push him, get him out there and get him clear. But I'm also going to try to hassle him in turn one and two, very much like the 16 car did. See if we can't get him up the racetrack. That might be 
I need to strike early, not allow that seven car to get clear uh, and, and be out front down into turn three. He can actually try to get on that bike bumper and keep that seven car loose all the way around turn one and two and get him up the track. John Hunter Nemechek, who's going to restart in the second row. Uh, back in 2021, driving the 54 car at the time. Same sponsor. Found victory lane. And now John Hunter Nemechek with six wins already in 2023. Is in contention again. He'll be restarting right behind Allgaier. It's fair to say the three fastest teams, the 21, the 7, and the 20, all year long, here they are, you know, running starting in the front of this race, only 10 laps to go. Austin Hill with his damaged right front fender and rear fender running up here in the front row. We'll see what he's got. 10 laps to go at Texas. Oh, the 20 missed a shift or something, just didn't get through the gears. Loses a lot of time right there. Look at the 21, though, underneath the 7. Algar fighting back. The double zero got up the racetrack and ran the 20 up the racetrack, and that is going to build a gap to the two leaders. Side by side for the lead down the back straightaway. Austin Hill has position down into turn three. Throws it in there really quick in three. And now here comes Allgaier on the outside. He retakes the lead. Clickerman right there in third place behind both these cars. Allgaier's got to be looking at his left side and seeing that right front fender of Austin Hill wondering how can he be running right here with that damage. Parker Clickman to the bottom of the racetrack. He's going to clear the 21 up off the top off of turn two. Remember He's got fresher tires. Now. That's what I was going to say, Rick. The 48 has that same tire advantage that Nemechek had. Will it work for Clickerman? Clickerman to the bottom of the racetrack. Allgaier out of turn four with the momentum. Now, eight laps of racing to go. Allgaier might want to consider running the bottom lane right here. That's where Klingerman's running. Take that away. He does not. He goes to the second lane. His car is better there, but that's not what it's always about. Sometimes you're just trying to mess up the car behind you. Klingerman side by side. Side by side down the back straightaway right behind him. Nemechek now clearing the third place. Oh, oh up the loose. racetrack. Here comes Nem here comes Nemechek. Back down to the bottom. He blocks Nemechek. And way up the racetrack with the seven of Allgaier. Maybe got some contact with the wall. The fight for the lead. Nemechek on the inside. Kligerman falls back to second. A lot happened in the center of three and four. Kligerman's got to stay focused here. Go take the fight back to Nemechek. John Hunter Nemechek now with about four car lengths between he and second. 48's underneath the seven of Argar. Watch good. him. 48 up the racetrack. Just got away from him. Car got loose. Ran the seven up the racetrack. He got back in all that debris on the tires. Now he's out of the fight for the lead. And Nemechek driving away from Kligerman. Sammy Smith up into the picture as well. He's running third. Allgaier has fallen back to fourth, maybe even losing another spot here as Chandler Smith gets to his inside. Yeah, the older tires had a chance with clean air, but now he's very vulnerable back here in dirtier air. Under five laps to go, and Allgaier continuing to fall back. He goes to fifth now. He's going to battle back on this back straightaway down on the outside of the 16. Race hard through turns three and four. All eight drivers in the top eight playoff drivers. And again, a win and you advance to the round of eight. Chandler Smith is now clear of the seven of Allgaier. Solid day for Chandler Smith. And to start in the back, now he, if he can finish this thing off, he can go to the Roval with a little bit of point gap that he needed. Yeah, there's a car slow around turn three and four on the apron, coming to pit road. It's not going to bring out a yellow. Yeah, I believe that's Daniel Hemrick. Under three laps to go. He's had some hard contact with the wall. 
Goodness. Wow. Yeah, that right side right beat up. From the top. Yeah, something, remember, something was wrong with this car the last few runs, and you wonder if it finally failed. They kept working so on it. He's losing spots as we speak right here. Next couple of laps, several cars are going to get by. That 10 car on the racetrack is the battle right here for Custer and Austin Hill, sixth place. Well, that's Hemrick. With, I'm sorry, Junior, you mentioned Hemrick. As he loses points, now you see only five points in front of Kligerman. What a job by Parker Kligerman today to get this car through the race, completed. He's got a complete race here. Great stage points, setting himself up for an awesome podium finish. Almost had an opportunity of winning the race. I know he'll be disappointed in that, but going into the Roval in excellent position for this 48 team. They're overachieving already to be in the playoffs. One lap to go, presented by Credit One Bank. John Hunter Nemechek, those fresh tires after the restart. He regrouped, was able to get by Parker Kligerman to take the lead here at Texas. I mentioned before, six wins already on the 2023 season. And a spot in the round of eight. John Hunter Nemechek is going to win at Texas. Oh, yeah, thank you guys. That's how you do it right there. Parker Kligerman, Sammy Smith, Chandler Smith, and Justin Allgaier are the top five. Let's go! Second win here at Texas, seventh win of the season for John Hunter Nemechek. A year ago, Ty Gibbs with Joe Gibbs Racing won seven races and a championship. John Hunter Nemechek now a step closer to that title. Picture looking very good for John Hunter Nemechek. As now he joins Allgaier with a win in this first round that takes him into the round of eight. John Hunter Nemechek, who was out front 38 laps today. Getting the helmet off, and Kim Coons down there with him. And he took the lead with seven laps to go for his seventh win on the season. Now officially locked into the round of eight. That lead change, though, walk me through what you were seeing, what was going through your head as you watched the seven in the 48 battle. Um, well, I messed up that restart. Um, it, it bounced out of third gear, so. Uh, that one was on me, but I knew that I had to push hard and, and try and recover right there. And uh, man, hats off to this 20 team, Joe Gibbs Racing. It is absolutely amazing what we've been able to accomplish so far this year. And I don't think we're done yet, that's for sure. Uh, we set a lot of goals as this 20 team coming into this year. And so I've yet to accomplish all of those. But win number seven, Romco back in victory lane here in Texas. Uh, thank you to Toyota, uh, TRD, Pi Barker, uh, all of our, our great sponsors that help us out. Um, this thing at the end was as fast is Xfinity 10G, that's for sure. And the best thing is, is that there's some great fans here. And uh, thank all you, every single one of you guys for coming out and supporting us. And uh, Penelope's here. Uh, first time that she has traveled really to the racetrack uh, with Taylor and Aspen and myself. And so uh, first victory lane for her. Let's go. Maybe a little bit of good luck. I mentioned though you're locked into the round of eight. You guys have an off week next weekend. What do the next two weeks look like for you and this team? Is it is it catching your breath? Is it already preparing for the round of eight? What are you doing here? Uh, pre preparing for the round of eight. Uh, my goal coming into today uh, was to lock ourselves in for the next round. Um, 
our road courses haven't been very great with myself this year. Joe Gibbs Racing as an organization has been really good on road courses, but uh, going into the Roval and not having to worry about that is definitely a relief. So um, we're still going to go there, try and play strategy, try and win the race, get some more playoff points, but uh, focus the Vegas homestead in Martinsville and then on to Phoenix. Congratulations. Thank you. That's John Hunter Nemechek. He mentioned Penelope, his newborn baby, his daughter Aspen, his wife Taylor. We'll meet him in victory lane here at Texas Motor Speedway. John Hunter Nemechek said, I need to control what we can control. And he mentioned there, jumping out of third gear on him, he was able to fix it and then make this pass right here on Parker Kligerman to get up front and led the last laps to get win number seven on the season. John Hunter Nemechek is locked into the round of eight as he gets the win here at Texas.